What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn in Cobra Kai? Becoming the Dragon Warrior, Part 5. Remember to check out the original story, the link is in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. After dropping Tori off at work, the car didn't stop at the restaurant where everyone was now gathering. Instead, Dash drove to La Russo Auto Branch where he had a surprise for Devin. After the car stopped, Devin looked around and said, It seems like you didn't get confused. What are we doing in a place like this? Dash looked at Devin but didn't say anything. He walked towards the building in the distance after opening the door for Devin, who put on a hoodie and followed him with a somewhat stiff smile. Entering the building, Devin could see nice cars parked around, but she didn't think too much about it, and followed Dash, who had approached a man in a suit. Dash looked at him slowly. Excuse me, I came for what I ordered this morning. The car salesman named Gabriel glanced briefly at Dash, and after recognizing him, nodded. He looked briefly at Devin, smiled at her, and walked towards the back of the store. Did you buy a car? Devin whispered to Dash as they both walked towards the back of the store. Dash looked towards a car that was covered with a blanket and said, This is an amazing car, believe me, you like it when you see it. As they approached the car covered with a blanket, Devin thought this was the car Dash should bought because many times he couldn't take more than one person in his car. But upon seeing the small car, she became even more confused. All right, here it goes. Gabriel removed the blanket, revealing a bright blue Mini Cooper. The iconic design of the Mini Cooper and carefully executed details, make this car a perfect combination of style and performance. Every curve and line reflects the craftsmanship and dynamic spirit of the brand. With a touch of innovation and a cozy interior, this bright blue Mini Cooper is not just a vehicle, but a statement of style and exciting driving. Appearing indifferent, Dash held Devin's shoulders and whispered, get in the car. Devin furrowed her brows, looked at Dash with confusion, and asked, why should I get in the car? This is my birthday gift to you, I thought you should have a car and be my driver from now on, Dash said sarcastically, while gently pushing Devin into the driver's seat. Devin was surprised, sitting in the driver's seat, she could see the details of the car's interior, and was amazed. No, I can't accept something like this. Closing the door, Dash walked towards the passenger door and said, Your favorite color, a stylish and incredibly designed car. You should like it, what do you think? She looked at him with a somewhat overwhelmed expression and said, You know this is too expensive of a gift, I can't accept something like this. It's my money, I earned it in the Japan tournament, so you shouldn't pay much attention to it, understand? Dash took Devin's hand and said, Besides, we can only enjoy things like this for no more than a hundred years, don't you think you're considering too much meaningless things? She nodded, indeed, life was very short, so knowing this, she smiled very brightly. Are you going to teach me how to drive? Dash looked at his girlfriend and nodded. Of course, but I'm a very strict teacher. Do you still want to learn to drive from me? This made Devin laugh, and she replied, I'd like you to be tough. You're quite bold, I've been a good boyfriend. Do you really want to see my evil side? Dash asked while smiling slightly. She laughed a bit at the uncertainty and said, then let's go home. Can we take this car with us? Dash nodded, then walked to the branch and asked for his car to be taken to Devin's house. After leaving the branch, Dash drove Devin's car to a place very close to her house. Alright, let's go, you can drive from this point. Do you trust me that much? Devin looked rigidly at Dash, who was beside her, attentive to every move of her hands. Dash smiled slightly and said, of course, let's go, start the car. But before Devin started the car, she looked at Dash and asked, what about dinner tonight? Dinner is taken care of, I just notified Mr. Chosen that we can't attend because we have certain inconveniences. After saying that, Dash took out his cell phone and started recording this moment. Then Devin started driving very slowly. Dash could tell that he almost ran out of breath from laughing so much at seeing Devin's scared expression every time the car passed by. Stop laughing, it's not funny. Devin said, having parked the car outside her house. Dash, who got out of the car, said, We'll have to share a car emulator, you'll learn a lot from driving. Devin sighed and asked, Shall we order something for dinner? Of course, and we'll also watch that horror movie you mentioned. The one called Priest, pray for us. Sounds good, let's go. Devin said, regaining her composure, but not before showing her family the new car Dash had bought for her. 
In school, Dash was sitting next to Devin, playing with a tangerine and listening to the class without paying much attention, because he knew that many of the things being taught wouldn't be useful to him. Why did he need singing classes? They were truly unnecessary classes, some of the educational systems were confusing to him because they weren't effective. The education system of this country is made to control us, we must be the resistance, Devon Dash muttered while poking Devon's ribs with his pen. Devon didn't flinch. Every time Dash got bored, he did these things, and she knew the best way to make him be quiet was to remain silent herself. If she started arguing now, it wouldn't lead anywhere. Therefore, she grabbed Dash's hand that was bothering her, and prevented him from moving further. Teacher Daisy ignored the behavior of these two, after all, both weren't disrupting the class, and they had good grades, which was enough not to be bothered. Alright, we have discussed with the school committee about the debate we will have with Seaford High School, and it is very important to maintain the honor of the school. As many of you know, this debate doesn't happen very often, but it will be held this year, and two students from this class have been chosen for the team that will be sent. Dash, who was now eating the tangerine, handed half of it to Devon and muttered, Poor people who have to debate in such a distant school. I wonder who was chosen. Dash Hill. Devon held back her laughter at Dash's confused look, and before he could complain, the teacher said, Devon Lee, congratulations. Both of you were the best last year, so you have been chosen for the competition that will take place in a few days. All their classmates applauded, everyone knew that both belonged to the debate team because they had gone to watch their debates, and they were all extremely interesting and intense. Devon looked at Dash and said, remember that you mentioned once that you would do anything as long as I learned martial arts by your side. Well, let's say we signed up our names to qualify for debates with other schools. Dash snorted and said, you should have told me, I don't like surprises. Aren't you angry? Devon looked at Dash with suspicious eyes. You'll pay me back in another way Devon pretended not to hear that. Dash wouldn't be bothered by something like this, instead, one could say that it was interesting. So much martial arts lately could be bad for them because they only thought about that. Therefore, some fresh air would be much more beneficial. Well, that's it for the class. Daisy looked at the tired students and sighed at the lack of energy those kids had in their bodies. After finishing the class, she walked towards the two students selected by the debate club and said, Now that you have been selected by your club, they will give you more information, but still, congratulations. You are the youngest to participate. Dash nodded and said, Of course, that's because we are the best. Devon smiled nervously, and after elbowing Dash to behave, she said, We are happy to represent this school. That's the spirit, guys. Good luck, and you better go eat something. As the teacher walked away, Devon began to pack her things, but before she left, Dash stopped her and said, Miss Devon, do you think you can escape your punishment? Now? Devon looked at Dash with vigilant eyes, unsure of what he was up to. Dash thought about it for a few seconds, but finally shook his head, suggesting to Devon that they go get the information they needed for the debate with Seaford High School to be better informed. As they took the sheets with the information, they went to the cafeteria, where they sat at a table away from the rest. They preferred to be in quieter places, so they decided to sit at that table, but the tranquility wouldn't last long because they soon had visitors. Eli, better known as Hawk, sat with several Cobra Kai guys and said, I thought you hadn't come to the cafeteria, why are we now in the corner like some damn social recluses? I'm glad you're here, I want to make you a proposal. Dash dragged his good friend Hawk, who they weren't really close, but still said, we'll need a cheerleading team, but we also need men in the group to protect ours. Huck got excited, looked at Dash more attentively, and nodded. Come on, you can ask me anything if you teach me that double kick attack. Of course, I'll teach you. We'll be training together these days, so I can teach you that move and many more. But the most important thing is that we're going to compete with Seaford High School, and we need a group to accompany us to help with the paperwork, but these are small things, so you could come and liven up things a bit more. Dash wanted to take Huck for a simple reason he hadn't mentioned yet. Hawk, of course, got excited, looked at Dash, and said, Of course, that sounds much more interesting than being in class. Then choose a few more friends, and before the classes end, send me their names by message to register them on the support team. Dash said with a charming smile. Devon, on the side, simply shook her head. She knew exactly what Dash wanted, that things between Eli and Dimitri would be fixed, so she would invite both of them on the trip to try to get them to join. It's crazy, bringing Cobra Kai guys will be crazy, Devon said briefly after Hulk left excitedly. Dash knew this was true, but still said, it's not so bad. At least we can focus on a single enemy, which is Seaford High School, and maybe this way, forget things from the past. As Dash walked through the school hallways, he ran into Dimitri, who was putting away some things in his locker. I haven't seen you around the dojo lately. 
Where are you training now? I've been considering it a lot, but among all the good things your dojo offered, the most painful part was the high tuition fees. That's why I decided to go with Mr. LaRusso, even though I don't like the way he teaches. Dimitri complained a bit about his recent classes with Mr. LaRusso. At this point, Dash raised an eyebrow and asked, Can I ask you a question? One question won't hurt, go ahead and ask me anything, but I hope it's not something that will waste my time, Dimitri sarcastically replied, as if he had something better to do. Dash smiled slightly and whispered, I have something big in the works. Do you want to be a part of it? Imagine being able to skip classes on Friday and go to a new school where you might even find a girlfriend. While Dimitri closed his locker, Dash smiled mysteriously as he laid out his plan. Obviously, he didn't care about the rivalries between Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do, but it was getting annoying, and if he didn't want the name of a sport he had been trained in for years to be tarnished by students, he had to intervene, and his plans were just beginning. Are you serious? Dimitri asked. Dash nodded before saying, I'll get permission from the school if you sign up as a support team member for the debate we'll have at another school. Devon and I are selected, so we can bring whoever is closest to us. As they walked towards the cafeteria, Dash let out a sigh of fatigue. It was torture to be involved in these silly fights between friends, but someone had to step in. The debate team. Oh, right, you're in that boring club that even someone like me agrees is torture. Dimitri agreed and signed a sheet with his name. With this paper in hand, Dash nodded as if he were a businessman who had just closed a good deal and said, I'm sure you like that school, they say they have a good cheerleading team. That sounds tempting. Dimitri accepted, if only to avoid seeing his friend with his stupid behavior, act foolishly with everyone. Maybe it would do him good to be out for a day and have the whole weekend to clear his mind, only then could he muster the strength to endure and think of a solution for the coming week. As Dash descended the stairs, he checked some messages sent by club members when suddenly he bumped into someone. Oh, you can go ahead Dash didn't even bother to look up, but suddenly a familiar scent reached him. Devon, who was in front of him, looked at the paper in Dash's hands and didn't say a word upon seeing the signed name. Sophia, his friend, was the one who said, you've invited the dynamic duo, I'm sure they'll cause a lot of trouble. Come on, there's nothing to worry about, I can handle those too. Dash smiled nonchalantly when mentioning Eli and Dimitri, who wouldn't give him any trouble. Devon sighed and said, you know you can't control them. Bringing Cobra Kai guys to another school is like carrying dynamite that can explode at any moment. Dash's gaze remained on Devon, and he joked, I don't think they're as explosive as you in debates, you're the most intense when we argue. Sophia laughed at these words and said, haha, last time you broke a guy's book while debating about the death penalty. Devon furrowed her brows at being exposed this way and said, well, um never mind, it'll be their problem if they do something stupid. Seeing that Devon's response seemed forced, Dash dropped the subject and said, do you know what debate topic we'll be working on? The general theme will be the evolution of technology, we have to be in favor of this topic, and we believe it will be very challenging to work on due to many moral factors working against us. Devon also put aside other topics as they headed back. Sophia nodded at these words, knowing what they would have to work on with the debate club from now on. As selected members, only three would debate, while a team of five would provide support in case of an emergency. I still think it's not that worrying, we could have the upper hand if we focused on what's most beneficial for humanity. In the end, it's all for us, and comfort is what everyone seeks. Dash didn't lift his gaze from his cell phone while discussing the debate with Devon. Devon was surprised to hear Dash's optimism and asked, are you really interested? Dash suddenly stopped, raised his head, and looked at Devon. We both know we don't like to lose, I think no one would like to lose at another school when you represent the place where you study, so there's a need to focus. With that response, Devon knew she had nothing to worry about. When Dash mentioned that he didn't want to lose, it meant that both of them trained very hard to be as well prepared as possible. Are you going to the dojo today? Sophia asked, diverting from the debate discussion. Devon nodded with a long sigh. Today, we'll have the snakes at home, we must obviously be there. That's true, now with Sensei Lawrence out, the old military looking guy will be in charge of Cobra Kai, so we'll have certain complications when communicating. Dash remembered the behavior of that man. As far as he knew, Chris was a cruel, ruthless, and unhinged Vietnam War veteran and sensei of the Cobra Kai Karate Dojo during the 1980s. He instilled a dangerous no mercy philosophy in his students, and encouraged the actions of generations of bullies. Now that philosophy has been passed on to the current generation, things started getting out of control when bullied kids learned how to defend themselves and stop being intimidated. That's what happens when you give power to people who have always been puppets of those who once had the power to control them. Now that few can't stop them, they won't stop until all the pent-up anger is released from within. 
Be like, or as everyone calls him, Hawk, that guy used to receive a lot of harassment, but now that he knows how to defend himself, those who used to harass him, don't even dare to look him in the eye anymore. Unfortunately, that behavior was being taken to the extreme, to the point where they are becoming the same kind of people who were once bullying them. Shall we go home in the meantime? My mom wants to see you. Devin looked at the thoughtful Dash and asked. Dash nodded and said, of course, it would be better than spending time alone at home. Rest position. Yes. In one of the main areas where karate was taught, Chosen looked at all the new and old students in his class today. Listen, many of you may know what will happen in a few hours, but remember, you must be courteous to the guests. Yes sensei. Chosen, with his hands behind him, said, cordiality is a virtue we teach in this dojo. They will train with us, but they will also be our rivals. If any of you are challenged, you must fight and uphold the name of Sakura Bushido as high as possible. Each of you will be assigned a Cobra Kai student to train with, fight with, and exchange knowledge with. If any of you feel uncomfortable for any reason unknown to me, you can always approach me, and I will personally take care of changing your partner. Yes sensei. For now, practice calm stretching movements. When Chosen said these words, he didn't want his students to be docile quite the opposite. They had to show the virtues taught in this place, and later show their teeth if these visitors became aggressive. It's obvious that the behavior of Cobra Kai students is not correct, they handle brutality in a way that could backfire, and that's something this dojo does not respect. But he understands the meaning, so today he would try to teach them what is taught in Sakura Bushido, to make these students understand that the world is very different outside. He could feel it, unlike Johnny, who seemed like a man seeking radical change in his students, John Kreese is a totally different man, a ruthless one who will not seek peace, even knowing his possibilities. That supposed rivalry that Johnny wanted to be fair is changing in some way, and it's most likely due to Kreese's presence. So the idea of having Cobra Kai students train at Sakura Bushido is good, at least until the true sensei returns. If mercy is for the weak, the result will always be to kill or be killed. Chosen knew the Cobra Kai students were escalating more and more into unfounded hatred for Miyagi-Do, so he deeply believed he could change it. While walking through the hallways of this huge dojo, very modernized for his taste, Chosen looked at Dash, who was wrapping bandages around his hands. Sensei, can you control that old military guy? Dash made a joke while greeting Chosen, who approached. Devon on the side nudged him and said, Our duty is not to confront an ingrained doctrine of thought, sooner or later, circumstances will judge each one. Chosen nodded and said, you're very right about that, but the young ones do need to be taught correctly, and I think Dash's initiation class would be very correct to teach to Cobra Kai students who live in a karate bubble. Are you saying Dash's eyes lit up, knowing that he could give an initiation class to Cobra Kai students? Chosen nodded and said, you will give the welcome words, you and Devin can be the ones to teach those kids to think twice before getting into a fight. Is that really right? Devon had suggested that instead of doing a presentation with a fake weapon replica, it would be better to use a real weapon like a knife, so it would be less shocking, but Dash disagreed with this point. Dash, who seemed very excited about this proposal, frowned when he heard Devon's question with obvious intentions. They never really fought, but they did argue for long hours until one of them gave in to the other's arguments, but now there was nothing to discuss. After a few seconds of contemplation, he waved his hand and said, maybe that will teach them a bit of the reality that their sensei talks so much about. With that response, Devin knew she wouldn't have any chance of changing Dash's mind. She didn't get haloed either, so she also began to wrap bandages around her wrists. Now everyone, at least the Kung Fu students, was dressed in a black uniform, while the karate students wore their respective white uniforms. Both were from Sakura Bushido, but this was a way to know who was the more experienced one. Once Chosen left, Dash stood in front of the window and said, Don't worry too much, I know the limits, so I won't go too far with this situation. We could just report Cobra Kai to the country's karate association to have it closed if you really care. Obviously, the sport they teach abandons people, and they use this same doctrine to cause problems. Devon didn't look at Dash while expressing her thoughts on the matter. She knew Dash didn't want Cobra Kai to be closed, but this was an easier way to avoid so many problems. Maybe you're right, but I want to try it. Dash wasn't one to cut Johnny's hopes of being a different man, it seems that now he doesn't have control, but surely he will. Also, to know if Chris had changed or not, he had sent someone to place cameras in the Cobra Kai dojo, to record everything 24 hours a day. This would give him an idea of whether to remove Chris from the rivalry or not. He and Devin agreed on a fair rivalry, but what's bothering them is that there are fights as if each dojo were a gang of lunatics. Karate is a doctrine and should only be used in an emergency, not to show how strong you are. Dash wanted to change the mentality of Cobra Kai students, and hoped to achieve it. 
He would also test Chris and know if he was a problem or not. Maybe he didn't want to get too involved in Johnny's rivalry with Daniel, but if this continued to escalate, he would intervene. Dash, the Cobra Kai guys have arrived. Looking at the young student who came to inform them, Dash nodded and said, Everyone in formation, let the sensei know. Yes. Devin, who had wrapped bandages around her ankles, wrists, and elbows, looked at Dash discreetly and said, If you don't have control, it's better to stay out of it, you know. I totally agree with that, after all, it's neither my fight nor my problem. At the entrance of Sakura Bushido, there was a large parking lot with Sakura trees and lots of vegetation. Being in this place near an artificial forest, few cars were seen, and normally everyone traveled by bicycle. But at the moment, a small truck was parked outside the Sakura Bushido Dojo. This truck was actually part of the dojo, and was responsible for moving large numbers of students when they had competitions. This place is incredible. Eli murmured, looking at the large place and all the vegetation around. Miguel had no choice but to nod and say, everyone says it costs a lot of money to train at this dojo, but seeing the facilities, I think it's worth every penny they charge for classes. But we are Cobra Kai, it wouldn't be very good if others heard us talking about a rival dojo that way. Tori knew that, being from Cobra Kai, they couldn't honestly expose what they thought, that would leave Cobra Kai in a very bad position. Miguel smiled and said, we may not have top-notch facilities, but our karate is the best. Mitch muttered on the side, being realistic, they gave us a beating, we only won because they brought young students who had been training for no more than 4 months. Eli on the side frowned, he looked at Mitch and said, you lost to a smaller guy than you, you should consider whether strength or speed is better. Move, guys, it's not time to get ready when our enemy enters right in front of us. Kress said, looking at Sakura Bushido Dojo. Miguel frowned and asked, enemies. They are allies, they will open the doors to their facilities, so they are not enemies. Kress looked at this troublesome student because he always contradicted him and said, when a beast invites its prey into his cave, it's not to be friends. It's clear that Sakura Bushido wants to destroy them, so you must do it first. That is Eli was also confused, did his friend Dash want to destroy them? He could be anything but heartless, he could tell from the day he sat in front of him when everyone bullied him. Kress, seeing that his students were turning against him, coughed a bit and said, but the important thing is to have fun and enjoy these experiences, but don't forget that they will be studying our karate, so we must do the same. After all, we will face them in the tournament. Upon hearing those more convincing words, Eli nodded and said, My goal is to defeat Dash, his karate is on a completely different level. Miguel agreed and said, To be the best, we must defeat the best. Kress nodded at these words, Once they beat Dash, then the whole valley would be for Cobra Kai. Good, guys, you know what to do. Yes sensei. Is it a gym? As everyone entered the martial arts school, often mistaken for a dojo even by its own students, the first thing they saw was a massive reception area where students were working on various tasks for the school. Most of the students at Sakura Bushido were diverse, ranging from university students to those in lower grades, even preschool, all learning various disciplines that shaped them into better individuals. Observing the silence of everyone, Kress, impressed by the place, approached a man who seemed to be a staff member and asked, Are you aware that we'll be received today? We've been expecting you. First of all, I'll take you to the changing room so you can change your clothes and be ready for the classes that are about to start. The worker professionally pointed to the locker rooms, and everyone, amazed by the place, walked through a hallway with numerous trophies on display. Are you seeing that black trophy? Damn, that's the one dash one in Japan for not participating in the valley tournament, Mitch said, looking at a trophy with a black glove on the shelf, along with the date and the name. Miguel could see the five trophies from the Valley Karate Tournament, and knew that the only missing one was the one he had won this year, which would probably be on the shelf if only Dash had participated. Dash's talent in martial arts was well known. Even after training for only a few months and winning two tournaments, he continued training as if he had never won anything. No one knew of an official defeat for Dash, but only a few knew that he had lost to Cheng and Dri in less serious training sessions. Still, no one considered this a defeat because nothing was official. All the boys entered the boys' locker rooms, while the only five women from Cobra Kai headed to the women's locker rooms. Upon entering, Miguel was amazed at how incredible these locker rooms were. From what they could see, each locker room had an individual locker, and none of them were occupied because there was a key in the open door of each locker. Everyone can take a locker and lock it, said one of the workers, pointing to an individual locker. Miguel looked at one of the lockers in this locker room, which was built in a circular fashion, and asked, aren't these lockers occupied? The worker smiled upon hearing this question and shook his head before responding, Each of the lockers in this place is for guests or students who have not yet signed their first annual membership with us. 
After all, very few who come to Sakura Bushido end up staying. That's why these lockers were created, the students' personal ones are on the second floor. Eli, who took off his shirt, said, This place is amazing. There are even screens here broadcasting recent fights in different martial arts. This is insane. Someday Cobra Kai will be like this, said Miguel, still convinced that Cobra Kai could be better. Mitch sighed on the side. I don't want to be optimistic, but there are millions of dollars invested in this place. It would be impossible for Cobra Kai to surpass Sakura Bushido in a few years. That's true, another student nodded. At least there are 200 students in this place. Do you think we can make a difference? But I still don't understand, why didn't the guys who beat us participate in the Valley Tournament? At that moment, Kress, who had changed into a black uniform, entered and said, that's because Sakura Bushido aims for more demanding championships. Haven't you seen the trophies in the showcases? Most of them are from China and Japan, very few are from the United States, so you can imagine the level at which this dojo competes. That's true. Sakura Bushido sees the All Valley Tournament as a training ground for its newer students, said Miguel, as he put on soft footwear similar to slippers. Eli looked a bit stunned as he furrowed his brows. This place was even more incredible than he imagined, and it's true what his sensei Johnny said, they were just starting in karate, and they couldn't consider themselves the best when they couldn't beat Sakura Bushido. Kress seemed to notice the overwhelm of his students and said, Calm down, guys. You are sprout compared to the old trees of Sakura Bushido. You are all very young and still learning. Perhaps in a few years, you will be the next champions in the most important championships worldwide. The Cobra Kai only has a few championships. It would be unlikely for us to be accepted in other tournaments, said a guy who seemed to know more about the topic. Kress smiled and said, You're mistaken if you think we only have a few championships. One of the old Cobra Kai students participated in the best karate tournament in the world, and was one of the finalists. Didn't he win? I heard from my friend that he lost due to an injury, but he left the name of Cobra Kai in great standing. It's a shame that everything ended in that last tournament. Kress didn't want to say much more and shook his head. Let's go, our hosts are waiting for us, so it would be a bad idea to keep them waiting. Yes sensei. Everyone followed Kress, who was talking to one of the workers, who was guiding them to the official area where karate was taught. Along the way, many could see students with different uniforms training in other techniques, and one asked, why do they have a different uniform? Oh, that's an excellent question. Each and every one of them is a student with more than three years of experience. However, what sets them apart from the other Sakura Bushido students, is that they are training in Kung Fu, and to wear that uniform, they must know more than three different martial arts. Kress looked at the guys who seemed to be learning Jai Jitsu techniques and asked, I thought they only taught karate, do they also teach Kung Fu? Of course, once students have learned enough about karate, if they wish, they delve into other disciplines, and that's when they start with Kung Fu. Everyone was surprised, there was no doubt that they felt a little fearful seeing those students even being taught to handle weapons. We have arrived, everyone is waiting for you, so you can come in, said the worker, opening a double door. When Kress saw the inside of the enormous dojo, he knew that this was where karate was taught. So, after leaving their shoes on a special shelf, they all entered. Once they stepped inside the dojo, Chosen, who noticed the arrival of the Cobra Kai students, shouted, rest position, to the sides, and wait. Now. Without saying a word, all the students roared, and each of them sat around the training area, turning their gaze to the Cobra Kai students, who felt even more intimidated by this behavior. You have them very well trained. Congratulations on achieving something like this, said Kress as he approached Chosen to greet him. After looking Kress up and down, Chosen said with a slightly softer expression, discipline is always good when learning. Outside of this training room, they can behave however they like without any restrictions. Wanting to make clear the teaching stance of the dojo, Chosen was straightforward with his words for everyone to hear. Once all the Cobra Kai students entered, he said, do you mind integrating yourselves? Kress nodded and looked at his students. They're comfortable, the class is about to start. Yes sensei. Everyone rigidly advanced to an empty part of the room, and sat in the same way the Sakura Bushido students were seated. Tori, who was among the group of women, could see Devon sitting to the left of Dash, and greeted her when they made eye contact. As for Miguel, without his sensei Johnny, he felt a bit empty and couldn't deny that he was also intimidated. Seeing how the students integrated into the class, Chosen asked Sensei Kress at his side, We have learned from your karate. Would you mind if we taught all the students a bit about the real world out there? Student Dash Hale will give a welcome practice, we do this with all new students. Of course. Kress wasn't very clear on what Chosen meant, but he ended up accepting because it would be rude to refuse given the circumstances. 
Then, once it's done, it would help me a lot if you also shared your philosophy on combat, said Chosen, smiling and pointing to the place where the senseis were seated. That sounds good, said Cress, walking towards where Chosen had pointed. Once everyone was seated, a special class officially began. I want to welcome our guests from Cobra Kai, a dojo that has slightly jumped to fame in the valley, and has secured the championship in the male division at the karate tournament, said Dash as he walked towards the center of the training arena. Everyone gave him mixed looks, some felt admiration, and others felt pride because the guy in front of them was someone many wanted to defeat. Dash stood in front of everyone and closed his eyes slightly, as his voice became even clearer and louder. Learning a martial art is a personal desire of each one here today, but you must be clear about the qualities that unite us all as a family, even though we don't know each other. Honor, respect, loyalty, balance, courage. These are some of the qualities sought and appreciated in a person who, after years of training, claims to live for and through martial arts. After saying these words, Dash thought carefully about what he wanted to convey. These are not just words spoken for the sake of speaking, but an entire philosophy of life that can be applied and reflected in many ways in the daily lives of those who decide to live their lives in a special way, and embark on a path in a very personal way. Their foundations can be found in Zen, Taoist, Confucian, Shinto, Bushido, or even ancient Christianity, and all the teachings of warriors from ancient times, including pre-Hispanic ones, which were based on spiritual disciplines and teachings to access knowledge that leads to a balance between matter, mind, and spirit. Which in turn leads to inner peace and harmony with oneself and all creation. Although the different philosophies have their roles, dogmas, and laws, in martial arts, their path is the control of the body and emotions through exercises that strengthen determination, body, and mind, which, in turn, awaken sensations, senses, and faculties unknown to the initiate in these disciplines. At this moment, there was no person who was not deeply focused on Dash's words, and who seemed like a leader completely determined to guide everyone. The Cobra Kai students felt ashamed, although they understood that their no mercy philosophy prepared them for real life, what Dash was saying certainly made a lot of sense. Anton showed no emotion on his face and said, These same characteristics are some differences between a martial art and a sport, no matter how extreme it claims to be, since in the former, everything is a stage to acquire knowledge and improvement throughout life, while in the latter, everything focuses on competition until a certain age. In that sense, you will determine whether this is a sport or way of life in which you will never stop training after a certain time. I made that decision personally a long time ago, and to be honest, I see all of this as an awakening, only after being defeated will I go a bit more calmly. Dash turned his attention to the Cobra Kai students and said, The martial arts we teach here at Sakura Bushido, are full of values and principles that are very valuable for daily life, such as respect, discipline, perseverance, humility, and empathy. These principles apply not only to training. They make martial artists better individuals for society. Victor, share one of our mottos in this martial arts school. Dash suddenly shouted without even looking at his friend. Victor felt incredibly excited and shouted, The society that separates its intellectuals from its warriors, will make cowards make decisions, and fools fight in wars. Martial means related to war, martial arts, therefore, are a moving manifestation of the fight. It is the only violent art, and this makes it exceptional. However, it is limiting to consider that the only basis of these arts is violence. Aggressiveness is only the tip of the iceberg, underneath, we find thousands of years of lives marked by a journey of self-knowledge and improvement, both physical and spiritual. Some examples. Pancratium, a form of what would now be known as wrestling, which existed in the Olympic Games of Greece. Kalari Pate originated 2000 years ago in India. Cambodian Bokator has another 2000 years of life. After saying this, Dash paused and pointed. Today, many go to gyms to learn to defend themselves or get in shape, but they end up finding much more than they thought. Community, friends, challenges, personal growth thanks to facing the difficulties that martial arts will necessarily expose them to, they may discover more hidden personal traits, such as discipline, commitment, or passion. With everyone's attention, Dash looked at Devin, who was sitting next to him, and she stood up after understanding that the most crucial moment of the teachings they were sharing with the guests had arrived. But there's something important that everyone must keep in mind, and that is that in the real world, the last thing all of you should do is resort to violence. Dash walked backward, leaving Devin to step forward. At that moment, everyone watched as Devin assumed a fighting stance, and it was then that Dash said, This mentality is for everyone. Miss Lee, try to hit me. Now. At that moment, Devin kicked, hitting Dash in the stomach, making him step back a few steps. Everyone was confused, they watched this demonstration with many question marks in their heads, but no one said anything. 
When you fight with a stranger, you think you're above them just because you know martial arts and are good at it. But what many of you won't understand is that in this country, anyone can be armed, and that could take your life away. Dash said as he pulled out the replica gun hidden in his body. While pointing it at Devin, who was a few meters away from him, she stopped moving and looked at Dash expressionlessly. This is real life, you will die if you encounter the wrong person. From being stabbed to being shot for seeking a fight that you could easily avoid by being smarter than others, Dash said as he lowered the gun. Cress, who was watching Dash's demonstration, looked at Chosen, who was beside him, and said, You have a very peculiar way of conducting your classes nothing in line with what they claim to teach in this place. I may understand who this class is directed to, and I want you to know that Sakura Bushido is aware of many of the misdeeds that Cobra Kai students are doing now that they know a lot about karate, but they lack understanding and wisdom. Chosen turned his head to the Cobra Kai kids and said, I know they were all oppressed, beaten, and bullied before, but if they don't understand when to stop, any of them could lose their lives in the troubles that adults involve them in. So, if you know what my students have suffered, you'll understand that hitting back is the right thing to do to stop the harassment. Press said, smiling slightly, understanding the intentions of this sensei. Chosen shook his head and said, but the kids don't know when to stop, more hatred generates even more hatred. Hit first, hit harder no mercy. That motto is made for killing, not for winning a fight. If you teach them that, they will die because they are not in a war, and I think you understand that. You teach whatever you want to your students, but I won't allow you to change the mentality of my students to one of weakness. Cress said it seriously, making his point clear. Chosen smiled weakly, but was not intimidated by this old man, so he watched as Dash shared his words with all the students. In conclusion, karate is not for everyone, and even less so are the martial arts. Dash said, making it clear that if they couldn't behave, it would be better if they didn't continue training. As the class continued, Dash walked over to Devin's side, and she asked him in a low voice, you should start considering your own teachings. I remember you being the first one to fight when problems arise. Dash didn't look at Devin but whispered, I won't allow anyone to insult you. I used to be very aggressive, but now I'm a completely new guy, and even better, a much more enviable boyfriend. Yeah, I admit that, but you must also agree that you have an irreplaceable girlfriend. It's not for nothing that you fell in love with my charm. Devin and Dash had long set aside any nervousness around each other, making jokes like these. Dash grunted a bit and said, but it's also good to learn to set boundaries. Being good people doesn't mean putting up with everything. At present, there was only one thing that would make Dash so angry that he would completely lose patience, and that's if someone messed with Devin. He couldn't bear to see anyone try to harm her, and he wouldn't allow it either. She knew how much Dash cared for her, and she did the same for him. So, the only way she'd start a fight is if someone messed with her boyfriend. In the end, they had come to a very sincere, fun, and romantic relationship for the moments when they could enjoy each other's company alone. Although they were a couple, they were only romantic when they were alone because it was something they wanted to share more secretly. You're my favorite person, the only one who has my full attention after Kung Fu, of course, but not for long, just until they defeat us, Dash said with a wide smile, appearing completely different from a moment ago. Devin couldn't resist the urge to tassel Dash's hair, but when she realized they were in the middle of a class, she withdrew her hand and did nothing more. Miss Lee, behave in class, you getting looks from your friends, Dash said, keeping calm but smiling slightly at this critical moment of teasing Devin. I'll kill you later, there's a kick I want to try, so you'll be my assistant. I can certainly help you try that kick, but we could do it elsewhere if you prefer. Devin looked at Dash and, after understanding what he meant, averted her gaze. You're crossing the line, a champion has no limits, Dash said with a slight smile. However, after saying those words, he regretted it because he began to feel a stronger and stronger pinch on his back. Um. After letting out a bit of her embarrassment, Devin caressed where she had teased Dash and said, You decide where to practice. Oh Miss Lee, Dash smiled slightly, trying not to draw attention away from Chosen's explanations. Very well, then find your partner and start training, Chosen said after starting the duo exercises. The idea was for Cobra Kai students to join Sakura Bushido's students, and both would train in a way that they could learn from their differences. Dash, do you want to team up with the two of us? Perhaps because Dash was too engrossed in his thoughts, he didn't stand up as soon as the initiative began. He had reached a point where he didn't educate anyone anymore. Generally, Dash was a guy who liked to make eye contact with people to understand what they were thinking and feeling. In his opinion, that was the most correct way to know what each person felt. Devin, who noticed this, shook Dash's shoulder slightly and said, What? Are you so surprised by my words that you've become immobile? Your friends are talking to you, it seems they want to train together. 
Eli looked at Devin and asked, Are you giving us a pity look? Exactly. Dash's training is exactly what is said to be torture hawk. Miguel, I recommend you don't follow the training lunatic, or you'll regret it. Devin shook her hand and, after giving Dash a sweet smile, went to find Tori, who should be nearby. When Dash lifted his head, he saw who he thought were Hawk and Miguel, who were going through love troubles. The three of us. Dash asked as he stood up. This was a surprise, after all, they had to form teams of two, but that was fine, it was just a question to start a less awkward conversation. Friend, let me tell you that we're ready to find out how you're trained, we're damn war machines, Hawk said as he slapped Miguel on the back. Miguel, who wasn't very convinced, nodded, saying, we're ready. Then follow me. I usually don't train in this place unless it's an instructor for the younger ones. Dash walked out of the place where everyone was exchanging knowledge and looked down as some people headed to the second floor. Miguel, who looked at the very clean floor, asked, where are we headed? Exactly where I usually train. This place is only reserved for the best students. It's not good for a young person to see the training capabilities of a fellow student who has been here longer. That would give them the wrong idea that they can reach that level in a short time, Dash said, pointing to the place where he usually trains Kung Fu. In this place, the atmosphere was more serious, everyone training here was focused on their own goals, and practically didn't need a mentor to teach them what to do, because they knew exactly what to focus on. For Miguel and Hawk, if the previous place was intimidating, this place was terrifying due to its intense aura. If you're going to train with me, I only need one thing. Listen to me as if I were your instructor, and then maybe you might learn something, Dash said, awaiting the response of these two enthusiastic guys. Eli nodded and said, I'm ready. Looking at Eli, who had agreed, Miguel also had doubts and nodded. Just tell us what to do, and we'll do it. In the end, everyone always wonders, how does a champion train? As with the lead athletes against their opponents, if they devote the same amount of time to training as everyone else, they might learn where their potential comes from. Hard worker talent. At some point, these two things might mix, but normally, a champion doesn't maintain their pace once they've won. However, Dash isn't in that circle, he has not only improved but has gone much further. Thud. 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 Their punches are too strong, they need to be faster and use every part of their bodies to be more powerful without the need to exert themselves to the maximum. In the training dojo, repeated roars of people who seemed furious were followed by sounds of punches hitting training bags. As the host of this rigorous training, Dash perfectly demonstrated the way he normally trains, and only after 20 minutes, Miguel and Hawk seemed unable to keep up. Thud. Thud. The current Dash didn't look different from the one two months ago. However, he had a more mature aura that gave others the impression of having a better understanding of his own virtues. After overcoming family problems in a way that wouldn't affect them for a conversation, Dash was able to improve as a person, changing his character significantly. He had reached a point where he didn't worry much about his future achievements in martial arts, because he had achieved a lot. But recently, with the appearance of a formidable rival from the Wasabi Warriors, things had changed a bit. During that period, Dash somehow began to care more about things around him. He knew that it was because he had overcome his unique case of getting a second chance to live a full life. In the serene training room, the punches echoed one after another. Dash, who had special methods to alleviate pain in muscles and bones, continued his training with intensity. Therefore, only through intense training, tenacity, and perseverance, did he continue to improve his combat abilities. It could be said that Dash loved the feeling of suffering because he knew that he was alive, and that he was using all the capabilities of his body to keep improving. Huff huff in the training room, three figures followed a training routine, and now they were doing push-ups. Dash supported his weight with his fists, and occasionally jumped to toughen his knuckles, which were indeed in perfect condition to fight without gloves and do a lot of damage. These are more than 50. Hawk mumbled, completely soaked in sweat. Miguel, who wanted to know Dash's level, was completely impressed and believed that his arms would stop working at any moment. But Dash, using only the strength of his arms, went up and down while counting the first set. Sweat started to soak his clothes, while new waves of sweat fell from his forehead. Crack. 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 At that moment, the stiff bones from having thrown punches a moment ago began to crack due to the stimulation. This is the last one. Dash said, gritting his teeth slightly as he felt that burning sensation inside his muscles painful but successful. Al Miguel and Hawk fell to the ground, exhausted by the weakness of their muscles. So, after today, it might take them a few days to recover. But Dash knew exactly that his training routine couldn't be followed by just anyone. He walked to a backpack and pulled out two small jars. At night, after showering, applied this ointment and bandages, it will greatly improve pain relief. 
Looking at the unlabeled jar, Miguel looked at Dash and asked, Where does this medicine come from? A master in China sends them to me, they're good for muscle pain, so you recover in a day with that. After saying this, Dash walked toward a training dummy and positioned himself. Hawk, who was watching Dash, seeing that he was about to train his punches after having exhausted his stamina, nudged Miguel and pointed to where Dash was standing. Who, thud, thud, thud. As soon as he regained his breath, Dash executed some special attacks from his martial arts, aimed at numbing the muscles. Dash started with a direct punch to open up the combinations. Anton's style had evolved into his own style, ranging from soft punches to ones so strong they could even break his opponent's bones. But focusing only on competitions, Dash only made gentle movements, and not so hard because he would be disqualified if he didn't. However, for his upcoming tournaments, for some reason, he thought that very soon he would be pushed to the point where he would be forced to use all his strength. Faster, stronger, deadlier, the only place where Dash had no mercy was in official matches, so either his opponent surrendered, or he would attack until the referee stopped him, which always happened. Of course, one thing is not having mercy, and another very different thing is not having respect. Dash had always respected his opponents, which might have led him to remain undefeated. As Dash increased his speed to the maximum level, even the training dummy began to show signs of cracking. After realizing that he didn't feel much pain, he realized that his knuckles had improved. After seeing this scene, Dash smiled slightly. Just as he was about to rest, a sudden idea appeared in his mind, making him close his eyes slightly. Maintaining his posture, he closed his eyes and tried to guide his breath to a level he had never handled before. While handling this new sensation, Dash's body adjusted, and at that moment, he made his move. Slightly opening his hand, he clenched it when his punch was heading towards the combat dummy in front of him. Every muscle in his body is now moving in harmony to unleash this powerful punch. Crack. When the impact force reached its peak, Dash's eyes opened as his fist pierced through the training dummy. That punch didn't seem so strong, but after piercing the training dummy a bit, it was sent flying backward. As this punch connected, Dash, for the first time, could feel a sensation similar to the inner energy that many experts talk about, including Bruce Lee himself. Handling that sensation, Dash could connect perhaps the strongest, fastest, and most powerful punch he had thrown. What a terrifying strength Dash stared at the fallen dummy and where his punch had hit. The demonstrated strength was comparable to that of the top martial artists who had done strength demonstrations. Huck got up and walked toward the training dummy, looked at Dash, and whispered, I hope you never have to use that punch in a competition, you would kill someone. I agree Miguel felt chill seeing the result of that punch. Dash, who didn't know what to say, could see some wounds on his hand, and then knew that he wasn't ready to use punches as strong as these. Hi. You're not being very mindful. Dash, after finishing his training routine, was guiding Miguel, who seemed to have his main issue in mind. Realizing this problem, with all his confidence, he advised, haven't you finished things with your girlfriend? It just happened, we haven't talked since, Miguel replied after stopping to show his punches to Dash, who was giving him advice. So that's the problem. Dash fully understood the situation and said, you still think things can go back to how they were, but that's not going to happen. You must know that when you fall in love, you are innocent and usually don't know your true worth. Miguel furrowed his brows at these words. What do you mean by that? That you didn't know how to handle your relationship because you still haven't finished getting to know yourself. You don't know what you're worth, and you don't understand when to stop, Dash said calmly, addressing all the issues Miguel had demonstrated in his relationship with Sam. Walking towards Miguel, he handed him a water bottle, and both sat on a bench to rest. You don't have control over your emotions, you still don't understand other people's emotions, and that's what you need to work on from now on. If you think there's still something bothering you in your conscience, end the relationship clearly, even if she makes things very obvious by not talking to you. Miguel seemed very confused. Obviously, he didn't want to end his relationship with Sam just because of a fight that could be resolved. But listening to Dash, he knew that he probably wouldn't find a clear way to fix it. Maybe we still have a chance Miguel still didn't want to let go of this longing feeling. But Dash, aware of all this, still advised, stay away from any relationship. Usually, things get worse for couples who break up. Jealousy, anger, or rage. They're just confused. If you still think there might be something, clarify things, end the relationship clearly, and maybe in the future, you both can come back. Maybe you're right, but it's still complicated to do it I thought we had a connection, but everything ended because of me. My jealousy made her have a bad idea of me, and I'm not that kind of person. Miguel opened up to Dash, explaining his deepest problems. Do you think you made a mistake? It's possible, but that's precisely because you still don't know yourself and weren't ready to be a good boyfriend. 
If you had trusted Sam, maybe you would know that she wouldn't cheat on you, and then you wouldn't feel jealous that other people liked her. Dash smiled slightly and was honest with Miguel about it. Some guys in this school are in love with Devin, but that doesn't mean I feel jealous or angry every time I see those people. In this life, everyone has the right to love, no one can avoid that. If you really want to change the way you express yourself, start by changing your attitude and your virtues, and maybe you'll be the guy she fell in love with again. Dash stood up and walked towards Hawk, who was punching a training dummy. Giving these pieces of advice to Miguel, he didn't expect much. He simply advised him as a friend in the best possible way about what he could do to improve their relationship. Maybe both are confused, perhaps they weren't ready for a new partner and just need time. As Dash could talk to Devin about it, she shared with him that usually it just takes time and clearing things up. But if this doesn't work, it's better to let go of that relationship that didn't work. The main problem with a breakup in a relationship is a lack of communication, trust, and self-awareness. In a hypothetical case, Dash could tell Devin that he's bothered by her being too friendly with the guys in this martial arts school, explain the reason, and both would come to an agreement. If a couple really wants to last, things will be sorted out. However, if the opposite happens, it would be better to break up with that partner, because one of the two parties isn't willing to work on the relationship. Dash, who approached Hawk, looked at him briefly and said, Why have you changed so much, buddy? I'm still the same, Hawk replied as he punched the training dummy. Dash sighed deeply and said, You're not, and you know it when I was little, I always had a weak body, but that doesn't mean I was always like that. Hawk stopped hitting the training dummy and looked at Dash, who was bandaging his wrists again after changing them. Things tend to change, but that doesn't mean we should become something completely different. You're a good guy, but you're lost. If you think Cobra Kai is changing you, then try training at Sakura Bushido. Dash made his proposal as he extended his hand to Hawk. Hawk didn't get upset with Dash's words because he knew perfectly well that he was only looking for the best. But still, he didn't hide his denial and said, My family is Cobra Kai, I won't abandon them when they're the ones who made me strong. But they also made you foolish, think about my proposal. If you think you want to change, then just change the environment, not permanently but for a while, and you'll know the best version of yourself. Dash didn't want to keep pressuring his friends, so he walked away. In the end, these were their decisions. They would know when the time was right to change, and he wasn't one to say when. Still, as a friend, it was wise to let them know their mistakes and try to correct them. Hawk looked at Dash, who was walking away, and remained pensive. Since the last time he made a mistake, he has promised to change. Maybe he will, but he still needs time. This is very tiring. After finishing a quick shower to rid his body of sweat, Dash walked through the corridors in the backyard of the martial arts school, and sat down in front of a sakura tree. Everything seems to be fine. By inviting Cobra Kai, he thought that by showing them his way of approaching martial arts, they might understand a safer way to train and express themselves. What everyone wanted least was gang fights breaking out now that everyone knew karate, if that escalated, tournaments would be cancelled throughout the valley. That's why he sought something Daniel achieved in his early days in karate establishing a rivalry where they didn't fight outside the tournament. If he could achieve that, he wouldn't mind Cobra Kai existing and being an enemy to Daniel. On the contrary, that would make things much more interesting than participating in tournaments where he felt he only needed to win to prove he was the best. Does the best talent of Sakura Bushido open their minds in this place? A deep voice echoed behind Dash, and when he turned to see who it was, he smiled slightly. Sensei Kreese, what brings you to such a tranquil place? Clearing the mind, just like you're doing, and I think it's a good place for a conversation, Kreese said as he approached Dash and sat down beside him. Dash knew that this old man didn't want to clear his mind. In fact, he doubted what the old man's motivations really were. But he knew it was a potential issue he needed to be careful with, so he said, This Sakura tree always reminds me of one of my worst situations. I was dying, and the last thing I remember seeing was those sakura flowers falling from the withering tree. Kreese was surprised. He never thought a kid could express such hard-to-digest words so clearly. It was obvious he wasn't lying, he knew when people lied, and Dash wasn't lying. It must have been a tough moment. Dash smiled and said, I felt so weak that from that moment, I vowed to train every day, and it's something I've fulfilled to this day. If I hadn't created this martial arts school, I would have loved to belong to Cobra Kai. That's good to hear. It means that, in your eyes, Cobra Kai is not inferior to Sakura Bushido, Kree said with a slight smile of arrogance. In a real battle, there are no fancy facilities or amazing machines for training. You make do with what you have, so that's the definition of Cobra Kai right now. But Dash, hearing this, smiled slightly and said, If you go down that path, all Cobra Kai students will slowly leave your dojo. 
The aggressiveness you're teaching them might lead them further away from their real goal. You're just like that, Sensei. You both think the Cobra Kai is on the wrong path, and that's something you shouldn't concern yourselves with. Let me give you advice do not interfere with Cobra Kai's development, or you and your dojo will be our number one enemies to eliminate, Kree said as he stood up. Dash looked at him intently and said, you're still living in your fantasies. Let me also give you a warning. If you try to bring back the old Cobra Kai, then I have the tools to destroy you. I prefer to settle everything in the arena, outside is too boring. Arrogant kid, you'll realize you can't change anything, no matter how hard you try, and those you consider your friends will be the ones who come looking for you, Kreis said in a very ambiguous manner. Dash, knowing the kind of man Kreis was, understood that this man hadn't changed at all, and he was the enemy he needed to face if he wanted Johnny to have a chance to change. With that in mind, he knew what he had to do. In the car, Dash lazily leaned on Devin's car window and rhythmically tapped the armrest. Suddenly, his phone rang, and he took his time to pull it out of his bag. Devin noticed Dash's behavior and asked, Now what's bothering you? Dash pressed the button to answer the call, only to receive a promotional call for a phone contract. Wrong number beep beep. I'm not interested, thanks. Devin looked at Dash while driving and asked again, Who the hell is calling you? Promotions. Dash muttered a little confusedly about how Devin had exploded while driving, so unconsciously, he adjusted the seatbelt. Devin noticed this and ordered, don't do that. Do what? That, you know exactly what I'm talking about, Devin said, obviously sealing the little trust Dash was placing in her driving. Dash smiled slightly and whispered, you know I have confidence that you won't make the same mistake twice in a row. Just drive properly, and if you crash, that means you won't crash again in your life. Dash heel. Devin shouted, gripping the steering wheel tightly. Hey, listen, I just had a very extensive conversation with old Chris, who seems to live in a war where karate is everyone's cold weapon, Dash said as he explained his points. So you're saying you had a conversation with the old Cobra Kai sensei, and he's a damn idiot, Devin said, nodding as she parked at a restaurant. Dash subtly unbuckled his seatbelt and said, I wouldn't call him an idiot. Maybe I'd call him an old man with war disorders and a very altered view of the current world. I feel like we need some fresh air a lot of fresh air. So, we'll study all night about the debate we'll have with the rival school, Devin said as she entered the restaurant. Dash smiled and said, during the night, we could also do other things. Crack. Ouch. Dash, who was just joking, approached the display to order food and go to Devin's place, where they would have a long night of work. Haha, <laughs> work, surely the days flew by, and aside from the upcoming debate, nothing else was discussed. Naturally, Dash disliked losing, especially making a fool of himself, so he truly exerted effort to prepare for the debate. At the Hale residence, the family was having lunch in their enormous villa. Dash's father, Frederick, had changed his attitude significantly, but in Dash's eyes, it wouldn't make a difference, since he knew exactly what kind of man his father was. His mother also tried, but it was uncomfortable for everyone except his younger siblings, who let lives like any other children their age. As the chosen successor to the family's wealth, Dash had been raised to protect the family fortune. While many might see this as a good thing, Dash never felt fortunate or happy. If his happiness was affected by this, he would have chosen not to be the heir to all that wealth. However, now that he couldn't do much about it, he needed to maintain appearances. At the moment, everyone coexisted, contributing what was necessary to maintain harmony. Each family meal carried a mix of emotions, and everyone had different thoughts in their minds. Sometimes, many weren't in the mood to eat, but as their duty was to coexist, that's what they did. While Dash ate his scrambled eggs, he looked at his happily filled siblings and sighed. At least they wouldn't have to go through everything he did. He envied them a bit, and that elder brother feeling was rarely present when looking at them. Elena looked at her eldest son and asked, You have your debate today. Will they allow people from outside the school to listen to it? I'm not sure. Since it's a school that's relatively far away, we only know that the debate will be a bit long, Dash replied briefly, but made his intentions clear. Firstly, he knew his mom didn't have time to visit a school just to watch a debate. She had been making it clear throughout her life. Raising Dash, that time is money, and she wouldn't waste it on trivialities. You can probably watch the recordings if they stream them online. The school will likely broadcast it, so don't worry, Frederick said while looking at data on a smart tablet. Can you take us, big brother? Yes, and you could also buy us a large ice cream. I'll bring you a huge ice cream with vanilla, chocolate, and mint flavors. Dash replied briefly, finishing his breakfast. Dash, where are you going? Elena looked at her son, who was getting up. Dash, who wanted to arrive early, said, I have to help Devin with some things about the debate, so I'm leaving early to have everything organized. 
Frederick nodded and said, Good luck with the debate, remember to always maintain character. Count on it, Dad without saying another word, Dash went to Devon's house, where they would pick up the documents they had been working on for the past few days. Daisy looked at the students ready to travel, all of them were the most capable for the debate, and some were there for moral support. Her smile was magnificent because she knew this group would win. However, her smile froze when she saw a boy with a somewhat questionable hairstyle. Hawk, what time did you leave the party? A tall boy asked from afar, and Eli, who was smiling, shouted, I don't remember, but you owe me the bet from yesterday. When Hawk walked towards the bus, he looked at a glasses-wearing boy who handed him a sign and said, Get out of my damn sight, four eyes. At that moment, Dimitri, who had approached from the other end, said, If we have spare time, we could visit the National Aquarium for the protection of wild turtles with star shells. Oh my god, what the hell are you doing here, Eli? Hawk looked at Dimitri and furrowed his brows as he approached. No, that's my question. What the hell are you doing here? He invited me, Dash did. I believe, for obvious reasons, that you don't belong to the debate team, so if you're smart enough, you'll know why we're here, you and me, Dimitri said, realizing that this was Dash's plan to bring them together. Hulk furrowed his brows even more and asked, do you think I'm an idiot? Daisy, who knew there was a bit of a bad attitude between these two boys, approached and asked, is there a problem? Oh, Professor Daisy, they just lost all their savings in a basketball game, so they're a bit upset. Dash, who appeared on time, held Hawk and Dimitri on each side. Of course, they're great friends, so there won't be any problem. Mr. Hale, please ensure order among your selected, or I'll have to take action, the teacher told Dash before boarding the bus. Of course, there won't be a problem, right, friends? Dash said, tightening his grip on his friend's collars. Dimitri, who was feeling increasingly suffocated, nodded and said, Of course, there is no problem between us. That's right, what he said, Hawk said, nodding with a slightly unnatural look. At that moment, Dash got closer to his friends and said, I guess you both don't want to lose your days off and extra points, so I suppose you both know exactly what to do during the trip. You're going to end up choking us if you tighten the grip on our collars a bit more. Oh, sorry, get on now, Dash said, pushing his friends without giving them a chance to refuse. Devon, who came from behind, said, it was a bad idea from the beginning. Do you really think it's worth it? I want to believe that, Dash said, smiling slightly. Miguel, I thought you wouldn't come since I didn't see you outside. Dash was surprised to see Miguel on the bus, and greeted him as soon as they locked eyes. Miguel smiled faintly and said, well, I thought maybe taking a breath of fresh air could help me handle my problems better, and, in the process, improve my attitude towards people who don't know me. You're right about that. Dash walked towards where Devon was and sat beside her without saying anything else. Interestingly, Hawk sat at the back, and the person who sat next to him was Dimitri, who was looking for a good spot to read his comics in peace. Before you get all dramatic, I did try to find other places, but Professor Daisy sent me to this seat, so behave. Don't tell me what to do. The rest of the people on the bus, which were no more than 20 students, all tried not to look at the duo, who seemed to have many problems. Why is a bully coming with us? Asked a glasses-wearing boy, looking at Hawk, who had blue hair. Another boy in the group replied, possibly, he's with us to defend us from other guys who might report us to the school we're going to. That makes sense. How didn't I think of that before? Near that discussion, Devon shook her head and murmured, this is mind-blowing. To think that Hawk and other Cobra Kai guys had come with Dash's group for the trip where the debate would take place is seriously hard to believe. And now, everyone thinks they are somehow protectors of the weaker ones, which is even more mind-blowing. On the side, Dash should remain silent all along. As the instigator of the chaos that was unfolding, he preferred to try and close his eyes and listen to music in silence. In fact, he couldn't say much in these situations because he was simply a spectator after creating magic on this trip. In a way, it made it more interesting, and this was his contribution to making the trip more intriguing. The problem was that he was the one who had to solve the problems if they arose. Is it really worth it? Dash silently wondered as they approached the school. Dash couldn't stay still because the consequences of fighting in a school that wasn't his, would be more complicated than a simple expulsion. But being in a different place, it's hard to imagine that the guys would want to fight, at least that's what he thought. From what I've heard, there are good dojos in the area we're heading to. Let's not talk about karate when we're about to engage in a debate. And then, what are the chances of us winning this debate against Seaford School? Dash opened his eyes and looked at Devin, who was reading a book criticizing the education system. Devon looked up, and after thinking about it, she said, We have good arguments, but we're also morally on the weaker side. What Devon meant by this is that many didn't want to accept that technological evolution would bring problems rather than benefits. 
In other words, many jobs would cease to exist, and people wouldn't find that fair. Nowadays, if you say something against morality, many come out shouting about injustice. Then we should address those concerns by talking about other dojos that are in competition. We should. We have to. No so, what am I supposed to do after the debate in this place? Ash wasn't sure if they would have time after class simply because they were coming from far away. For that reason, they needed to leave very soon after finishing the debate. We'll figure something out, Devon said, turning her attention back to the book in her hands. After many hours of travel, the bus arrived at the school grounds, and some teachers who were attentive to their arrival, were waiting for them in the parking lot. While Professor Daisy got off to greet them, Dash stood up and said, We're here for one thing, and that is to win. We are the competition, so there will be a bit of hostility towards us, but we must not get aggressive. If one of them responds aggressively, I'll break their face. Hawk and two more Cobra Kai guys were sure of that. Miguel, on the side, asked, aren't we here to change? That confused by everything that was being said, Dash waved his hands and shouted, get your things and follow us, don't separate. Getting off the bus, everyone walked in an orderly manner to where they were being directed. Welcome to Seaford High School, where education meets an inspiring environment. Our school grounds extend over a dynamic landscape, merging green spaces with modern facilities, a woman said, handing out energy drinks to each student. We have innovative classrooms and vibrant sports areas, each corner is designed to foster learning and academic excellence. Daisy forced a smile and muttered, they have so much energy, do you know that woman? Devon looked at the expressions of that woman and asked. Daisy looked towards where Devon was pointing and replied, she's my debate rival. We've had many discussions, and we certainly have our differences. All I ask is that you crush them, don't let them breathe in the debate. Oh Dash fell even more silent. Were they being led by a teacher or someone who came with more personal intentions? You heard it, guys, let's crush them. Hawk was ecstatic as he exaggerated his actions just to annoy his friend. Dimitri, who shared his comics with Eli, looked at him strangely and muttered, I don't think Professor Daisy is referring to exact physical contact between two people. You don't have the right to comment. Yeah, right. Who the hell do you think you are to tell me I can't comment? If you're going to kiss, it's better if you do it somewhere else, you're making people uncomfortable. These two put Dash in a situation where he had to intervene, so looking sternly at these two friends, who didn't exactly know how to approach this, they stopped bickering. It was already expressed enough because he would participate in a debate and worry all the time about two of his friends getting into a fight. Now he gave Devon the right, and he understood that she was right to mention that it was a bad idea for these two to accompany them. I apologize, but I only acted like my peers in a clearly unnecessary situation. Dimitri apologized in a very severe manner. Hawk, on the other hand, didn't say anything, lit away, and focused his attention on the landscape, which somehow attracted him more than fighting all the time. Look on the bright side, by the end of the day, they'll clear up their differences and become friends again. Please, just shut up. Dash looked at Miguel and, after careful consideration, told him, you should help me, they're not only my friends, but yours too. Miguel looked at Dash and, with a weary expression, said, believe me, I'm doing everything I can to get them back on good terms. Devin walked past Miguel and said, well, you're not trying hard enough. Does she hate me? I really feel like she hates me, what's happening? Miguel was confused. No, believe me, she doesn't. She's friends with Tori, and apparently, there are women's conversations that involve you, so if I were you, I'd be careful not to make a mistake. Dash said, patting Miguel on the shoulder. Entering the school, they were all led to a special office where they were given provisional credentials, and they all entered the preparation room where they would be working on their plans. Alright, guys, listen to me for a minute. I don't want you to wander too far because you could get lost, and it would be a lot of trouble to regroup. Daisy looked at the kids and spoke aloud, grabbing their attention. I have photographic memory, I just memorized this place, and I can confidently say I know exactly where they sell sugar, that white powder. Everyone turned to see a short boy say these words, and when he realized everyone was looking at him, he asked a little confusedly, did I think it or say it? For the love of God. Dash murmured as he slumped into a chair. Did you guys see the Earth Pianist Club? Dimitri looked at the boy who mentioned this and said, that should be illegal. For the first time, I agree with something you say. Hawk said these words, feeling a little uncomfortable. We should look for an online map of this school, it would be very helpful to have one. Dash, who was listening to all the conversations in this group of perhaps very special-minded kids, looked at Hawk and thought that maybe it wasn't as bad as he thought. Devin walked towards his side, and after sitting down, she murmured, I think this group is a disaster. They say geniuses weren't elegant men, but crazy people living under a bridge. That's a myth. 
The boy sitting in front of Dash turned around and intervened in their conversation, but after seeing Dash's piercing look, he turned back around. Dash finally asked out of curiosity, do you know how good the guys we're facing are? They haven't handed out the list yet, but at these education levels, I've never faced a debate. Devin, who had more experience in school competitions, said. Upon hearing these words, Dash nodded and didn't ask anything else. He looked at the sheets with the topics they would discuss, and began to read them just to occupy his mind. Are we all here? Asked Professor Daisy, looking at her students. Everything is ready, Professor Daisy, said Devin, who seemed to be much more nervous and excited than usual. Daisy smiled at the enthusiasm of these selected students. For her, being chosen as the teacher to bring these students was one of the most pleasant feelings, and she couldn't help but draw a bit of this happiness at this moment. The result doesn't matter, but how you perform out there. Remember, in a debate, you must be yourselves to give your best. Understood, we know what to do, said Dash, adjusting the suit he had worn for this occasion. Devin approached him and adjusted his tie, looking at Dash approvingly. You look incredible. Don't you think this is too much? Dash asked, feeling a bit uncomfortable in his tight suit. No, this is the minimum. For this debate, the three participants from Dash and Devon's school decided to follow established rules by wearing both feminine and masculine outfits. Being presentable was how they would fulfill one of the debate's requirements, and that's when everything would start. For this occasion, Dash chose to wear a black suit, but the muscles of his body, which were usually hidden, now made him feel a bit uncomfortable in the tight suit. As a martial artist, he was not accustomed to wearing tight clothes, so the discomfort was significant on this occasion. Devon, on the other hand, couldn't stop adjusting Dash's tie, which was obviously uncomfortable. You'll open the debate, so you must be very intense in the first few minutes. You must surprise not only the audience, but also the judges who are unfamiliar with this school. Alright, guys, the support team will be among the audience, so we expect good results from all of you. Daisy left with all the students who had come and walked away because it was about to begin. Students, you must go to your assigned seats right now, said a guy who seemed to be in his last years of study. Dash nodded, and after taking a folder with some sheets containing key information, he left the room where he was. By the time they passed through a corridor, they soon reached a podium where there was a whole place full of students who soon threw glances at them. For someone like Dash, this place was not overwhelming, but he could perfectly understand that feeling the eyes of the public could generate some discomfort for his companion, a guy named Liam, so he murmured, just go with the flow, this is no different from the simulations we do in class. Liam was surprised for a moment, but ultimately nodded and muttered, thanks for that. When everyone was in position, one of the judges took a microphone and said, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this exciting debate on technological advancement. We are here to explore the different aspects of this phenomenon that have transformed our lives in unimaginable ways. For this presentation, we have the positive side of this debate from West Valley High School, who have traveled a long way but are here to teach everything learned in their school. As for the negative side, we have our school, Seaford High School, who represent our virtues. After giving this brief introduction, the host said, on the other side, we have Dash Hale Devon Lee, and Liam Allen. Let's give them a big round of applause. All the students applauded enthusiastically. It was not at all common to have students from other schools, and seeing many of them was a very interesting event to watch. On the positive side, we have Kim Crawford, Jerry Martinez, and Eddie Jones. Let's give our Seaford High School students a round of applause. In the same way, the applause did not fall short, and when it stopped, one of the judges said, each side has its arguments, so we as judges will refrain from asking you questions. Please let the positive side start with their opening arguments, and it will be contradicted by their first opponent. You have five minutes each. Dash nodded, and as the first to go, he stood up from where he was sitting and approached the podium, where there was a microphone. As soon as he approached, he smiled charismatically and, looking at the audience, said, good morning. Taking a not-so-short pause, Dash began his entry by saying, Undoubtedly, technological advancement has been the driving force behind incredible progress in all spheres of our society. From medicine to communication, technology has improved our quality of life and opened up new opportunities. Take artificial intelligence as an example. It has revolutionized healthcare, allowing for more accurate diagnosis and personalized treatments. Furthermore, the global connectivity provided by information technologies has created a network that unites people from all over the world. This has facilitated the exchange of knowledge, international collaboration, and impressive scientific and cultural advances. The judges nodded, and at that moment, Dash pressed the button to turn off his microphone, and it was time for the opposing side to argue their points against. 
Jerry coughed with a bit of nervousness and said, Despite all these benefits, we cannot ignore the risks and challenges associated with technological advancement. Automation, for example, has led to job losses in various industries, generating concern for economic and social stability. In addition, excessive dependence on technology has created privacy and security issues. Mass data collection and the risk of cyber attacks pose significant threats to society. Saying this, Jerry pressed his button to pass the word to Dash, who immediately started to respond. We live in technological advances that bring many social benefits. This technological eruption provides us with massive data, driverless cars, genetic engineering, smart cities, astonishing artificial intelligence, or robotic automation. Dash smiled slightly and pointed out, I won't be the one to say that technology is not something to be enthusiastically embraced. I won't be the one to doubt its virtues. Obviously, it won't be me, but I can see all of you embracing change with a smile on your lips. In these moments, Dash's shrewd gaze focused on the audience and them on him, deeply connecting with each of the people, and making them understand that his arguments were very valid. Is she? Devon's gaze turned to the girl named Kim Crawford, remembering how not long ago she discovered that someone very precise about Kim, considered her a target to beat in karate. The whole story was impressive because another guy named Jack was also interested in defeating Dash, after he lost to him in a very important tournament in Japan. But at this moment, she knew perfectly well that it wasn't the time to be distracted. She soon focused her attention on Dash, who was presenting strong arguments, and seemed to have the support of the audience. I yield my remaining time. Having finished his words, Dash concluded his last response to an opposing argument and ended his time. The jury nodded, and at that moment, it said, very good arguments. Now, please let the next contestants come forward. Devin stood up, looked at Kim, who also stood up, and smiled slightly before walking to the microphone. As soon as she arrived, she looked at the judges and said in a clear tone, since technology began to gain strength, it is what facilitates our lives in society. In the last half century, technological advances have been so great that they have modified even our way of living, communicating, and relating, even allowing progress in essential fields such as education, science, or medicine. One of the main reasons why all of you should be in favor of technological advancement is the saving of work, time, and money. Technology allows us to perform many tasks much faster and better than before. Some tasks are performed directly by machines, humans only intervene in the process of analyzing data processed by computers, but even those jobs will change soon. After saying this, Devin paused and pointed out, in our case, we can say that technology has brought us great advantages for social development. In recent decades, technology has brought us incredible inventions, such as products and applications, that have changed the way we communicate. Mobile phones, Discord, or WhatsApp are clear examples of how it is now easier than ever to be connected over a distance quickly, easily, and cheaply. In this simple aspect, it is clear that technology facilitates daily life. An example could be quick access to information. The first of all the advantages of technology that we will mention is access to information. Thanks to technology, it is becoming faster and faster. This allows more people to have access to more data that can help them make better decisions. Also, through websites or devices, anyone can access any type of knowledge. This, combined with speed, is a valuable tool, especially in formative processes. Internet access and technological improvements, as we mentioned at the beginning, facilitate communication, shortening distances not only in personal, but also in professional life, directly impacting the economy. Looking at the audience and especially at Kim Devon, with a deeper voice, said, Many of us have tired lives, and sometimes we need something to entertain us. That's why, with technological improvements, this has changed. Since streaming emerged, thanks to technology, there has been much more interaction on social networks and in video games. It also allows those who were once content consumers to become creators, not only on platforms that serve to display content, but now everyone can also be their own means of communication. After saying this, Devin pressed the button to give the floor to Kim, who immediately said, you said that motorized jobs handled by machines and analyzed by humans will end. Do you mean that we will be left without any jobs? The digital universe affects us all, whether personally or professionally. New technologies and their applications have evolved at lightning speed. They have allowed progress in crucial fields such as education, science, or medicine. They have come into our lives to solve many problems, but also to create others. Kim removed the blonde hair covering her forehead and said, It is evident that machines and robots are increasingly replacing the human hand with the negative consequences that entails. As technology advances, human labor is undervalued. 
This year, we began to realize what artificial intelligence tools can mean in replacing jobs with artificial intelligence. The results achieved with artificial intelligence models are surprising a creative tool that provides solutions to complex problems in seconds in practically any discipline. Taking a strategic pause, Kim looked at Devon and said, This misuse and excessive use of technology are causing significant health problems such as addiction, depression, social isolation, anxiety, hearing damage, or eye diseases. With the seas, there will be less and less human interaction. With the arrival of search engines like Google or WhatsApp, interpersonal communication is fading. We hardly ask anything of the person next to us, that needs to change, and we need to start working on measures to solve it. Kim said, and after that, she pressed the button to give the floor to Devon. Devon gripped the podium tightly and said, who the hell cares if people talk less to each other. Dash, who was sitting, quickly touched his forehead, knowing that Devon had reached the point of internal explosion. Devon looked at the judges a bit indignantly and said aloud, how many of you plan to make more than five friends in this life? To be honest, for many, friends don't exist, and that's okay. I can't understand the drama of the absence of people when many will end up filled with hatred. As individuals, we'll know when we need someone else, and that's when that person will seek interaction in one way or another. Long-distance relationships through the internet are more common than you think, and have been a little-known trend for a long time. Devon adjusted the microphone and said, and to be honest, the digital universe affects us all, whether personally or professionally. New technologies and their applications have evolved at lightning speed. They have allowed progress in fields as important as education, science, or medicine. And they have come into our lives to solve many problems, but also to create others, and that's true. But the positive things outweigh the negatives, and one of them is easy access to information. Devon took a deep breath and asked, how many times a day do you access a browser to solve your doubts? Nowadays, libraries are less frequented, and the positive side of this is that we don't need books to access knowledge. Thanks to the reach of technology, information processes are automated and accelerated, all thanks to innovative technologies like broadband internet or user-generated information access applications on social networks, as in the case of YouTube, one of Google's most popular services. The amount of information circulating on the web is easily accessible to users looking for entertainment, analysts, or researchers. Mobile devices facilitate access to the network. Devon smiled a bit and pointed out, let me read you some positive points, thanks to the advancement of technology, the use of free software programs and systems is facilitated. Thus, we can choose between free or private software. We have the ease of collaborating with communities, greater ease of response, or advances in science and medicine. After saying that, Devon looked to Kim and said, technological advances have allowed solutions in crucial fields such as health, science, or education. Technological advances today overwhelm us with the speed at which they occur. They are essential to make our lives easier, work more productively, and generally improve the quality of life wherever technology reaches. If we take a look at advances in the engineering and industry world and go, for example, to the year 1903, we will discover that it is at this moment when an airplane with stable flight is first achieved. Yes, just 120 years ago, and since then, advances have occurred to allow thousands of daily flights between all countries in the world. In the transport industry, innovation is daily. It is enough to visit the page of any provider in the automotive or railway industry sector, for example, to see the variety of solutions that exist today to solve similar problems. If we visit this page dedicated to train impact protection, we will see different train stops, which have nothing to do with those installed 100 years ago in the USA, at the time when the railway industry was at its peak. Looking intimidatingly at everyone, Devon said, I yield the rest of my time. Everyone fell silent as Devon returned to her seat, and Kim, who still had a minute to try to gain a bit more advantage, also fell silent. I can't deny that everything you've heard so far is very attractive, but excessive dependence on electronic devices will eventually turn everyone into brainless monkeys, Kim said, trying the last thing that came to her mind at that moment. After a pause, Kim adjusted her voice, and she said, this misuse and excessive use of technology are causing significant health problems such as addiction, depression, social isolation, anxiety, hearing damage, or eye diseases. This dependence on digital devices means that we don't work as much with our heads. An example of this is the use of the calculator. No one does mathematical calculations to solve a simple operation anymore, but instead relies on this tool. Your time is up. Please, let the last participants go to the podium and explain the closing of this debate, one of the judges said, stopping Kim's explanations, who seemed very focused. Dash didn't speak with Devon and looked at Liam, who seemed very nervous. Until the closing, don't fall into repetitive topics, and this belongs to us.
Yes. Liam stood up and walked to the podium to begin his debate. That's insane, for a moment, I thought Devin would hit that blonde girl who was looking at her without any fear, Hawk said, sitting beside Miguel, who seemed very calm since the trip began. Dimitri, who seemed indifferent to the fact that he had recently had a fight with Hawk, looked forward and said, I heard that the girl named Kim, likes to do everything and is practically involved in many activities at school, but I guess this time, she'll lose to us. Hawk smiled and said, obviously, Devin's responses were annihilating, they won't be able to do anything against us. Miguel looked confused at his two friends who had a fight and asked, didn't you guys hate each other or something? We're in a silent truce, you wouldn't understand, Dimitri said, ignoring this fact. While the debate still continued, Hawk looked around and said, I have to go to the bathroom, watch my spot, I won't take long. It's better not to go too far, you might get lost, and the people here might kick you out of school for your exotic hairstyle. Miguel looked to the side and said, better that one of us follows him. Anyone up for going to the bathroom too? We're not in the mood I have a cramp in my leg, I need to watch this debate. Dimitri looked at all the uninterested guys, and in the end, he said, fine, I'll go. I admit that Hawk is trying to be himself again, so maybe he won't kill me when we see each other in the bathroom. Miguel smiled but didn't say anything, maybe this trip would change some things. While leaving the auditorium, Hawk passed through the halls of this huge school, and admitted that he got lost at first, but after carefully searching, he could find where the men's room was. As he walked casually, he saw a group of guys bullying a boy who didn't seem to be more than a year into this school. Hawk was trying not to cause trouble, but he knew that if he interfered, things could get a bit messy, so he walked past them. Please, leave me alone. One of the guys lifted the shirt of the bullied boy, and one of them said, Oh my god, how disgusting. Why didn't you tell us you had a horrible scar on your stomach? When Hawk heard this, it was as if a part of him ignited, so he turned around and said, Leave the kid alone, and I won't kick your asses. With intimidating eyes and fearlessly, Hawk looked at those three guys bullying the little guy among the group. Get out of here, and you won't get involved, damn idiot, one of the guys replied while waving his hand. Hawk looked at the boy who seemed to be crying, and, after understanding a bit what happened, took a step forward. You asked for it, blue-haired idiot. Boom. Two of the bullies took a step forward to hit Hawk, and keep him away from these problems that didn't concern him, but as soon as they advanced, they encountered a flying kick that hit one of the guys in the face. Damn idiot. Now. As the two made their move, they showed truly admirable coordination, but for someone like Hawk, it wasn't a threat, and he responded to the blows with even more brutal attacks. Hawk was focused on his defense but even more on his attack, so receiving the hits from those two people the impacts that weren't weak at all could be heard clearly. This time, he had made contact and quickly knew where to hit. Boom. Ah. Hitting a point where he could cause a lot of pain to his enemies, Hawk moved his right hand and, dodging a blow, forcefully attacked the stomach of one of the guys who was taller than him. The first one out, Hawk said with a smile, looking at the remaining guy. I'll break your face, damn meddler. The guy still standing threw a quick punch, but Hawk, who had more experience, dodged it and attacked the forearm of that person within seconds. With this advantage, he quickly kicked the last remaining guy to the ground. Ah. Uh, Hawk smiled slightly and walked toward the remaining guy, and quickly, this person began to curse him with rapid blows. In the distance, many were watching the fight, no one dared to approach, much less call a teacher, so everyone stood watching this fight with great interest. Are they intimidating Julio? The guy named Eddie Jones looked at the fight, and quickly saw how a guy with spiky blue hair was hitting some students, and among them, he saw Julio, who seemed to be being protected by those guys who were now on the ground. Oh my god, did you see that kick? Eddie, who knew this was karate and of very high level, took a few steps back, looked at the crowd, and said, I have to warn Jack, I'm not good enough to beat that guy. Knowing that someone was intimidating Julio, who was one of the guys interested in joining the dojo, he knew him, so seeing that he was being bullied by a blue-haired guy, Eddie quickly ran to warn Jack, and he did something about it. Wait, Julio, no one can beat Jack. Ah. Hawk looked at the pathetic guys in front of him, having beaten them up, and walked towards the one who was being bullied, saying, there will come a time when you'll have to fight for what you want. You won't always endure being the target of people's ridicule, and only a fool will save you. Just as he was about to leave, the guy Hawk had saved said, thanks, you didn't have to do that, but I really appreciate it. At that moment, the chaos had finally subsided, and everything returned to an unusual silence, as astonished looks continuously slid between the two figures standing. Hawk, who had defeated three people on his own without receiving a single blow, looked at the guy who reminded him of his more pitiful version and said, They call me Hawk. Now, don't bother me. While observing how Hawk headed towards the bathrooms, Julio gave him a thankful glance and subtly walked away, fearing that the beaten guys might get up. 
everyone couldn't help but focus on their own things. Many even moved away from the scene after recording the incredible fight, and wasted no time uploading it to the internet. At that moment, Dimitri, who had arrived at the hallway where the three guys were getting up, widened his eyes and murmured, I don't want to think about what happened in this place, but I guess I can figure out what went down. Oh, what bad luck. I missed all the fun. Mitch muttered, seeing that a fight had broken out in this place. When he looked at Dimitri standing a few meters away, he walked slowly towards him and asked, Did you see what happened here? If I knew, I'd tell you, but since I don't know what the hell happened in this place, you can imagine it for yourself. Dimitri walked away from Mitch and headed towards the bathroom. Damn it, this is really bad luck. Jack. 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 Eddie ran towards the auditorium, and when he saw people coming out one by one, he knew the debate was over. He asked loudly to find out where his friend was. We have a code red, Jack. Everyone was stunned by Eddie's behavior, and many even stepped aside, trying not to get involved in that dramatic guy's affairs. Has anyone seen Jack? His heart was pounding frantically, and his breath, having run a lot, was heavy. At that moment, a long-haired guy walked in front of a group of guys and said, Don't worry Kim. Sometimes you win, and other times you learn. Let this defeat not make you feel bad. Kim looked at Jack, and while containing her anger, she responded, You may not remember, but the guy named Dash I was debating with is the one you set out to defeat in the National Karate Dojo Tournament, to qualify for the Olympic tournaments. I didn't expect that. Should we go say hi? Jack wanted to turn around, but at that moment, he heard a voice similar to his grandfather's after walking a few steps. Eddie, holding his stomach, stopped in front of Jack and said, Danger, guys, causing trouble for one of the recruits Jerry, who was walking alongside Jack, looked at Eddie's appearance and said, That's why I mentioned that you should improve your physical condition. Things like this wouldn't happen if you were like Lebron. Who in the world can match an athlete just like that? Kim looked at Jerry as if he were an idiot. First, let Eddie speak, don't take away his space so he can breathe better. Jack looked closely at Eddie, who seemed to have recovered his breath a bit. Julio, the guy interested in joining the dojo, is being harassed by three guys, Eddie said after catching his breath. Where? With a serious face, Jack looked at Eddie with a completely focused expression. Jack's group exchanged glances, if there was one thing they couldn't tolerate, it was bullies, and they wouldn't allow them to intimidate kids interested in joining the Wasabi Warriors. In the bathrooms, on this floor to the right, Eddie replied while trying to catch his breath. Kim, who was a bit more agitated, asked, how do we identify them? One had spiky hair, the color of which was a very noticeable blue. That's enough, Jack said before starting to run towards the bathrooms. Jack's entire group followed him quickly, and soon they disappeared from the hallway, leaving behind a breathless Eddie, who did his best to walk quickly behind them. Hey, kid, where are your friends going in such a hurry? At that moment, Dash appeared behind Eddie, who was followed by Miguel and Devin, who were eating a chicken sandwich. Oh, the debate, guys. It's nothing. My friends are saving a kid from a group of bullies. Eddie said it with a forced smile. Devin, at that moment, stopped eating her sandwich and stared at Dash. Tell me it's not what I'm thinking. I think it's exactly what you're thinking. Miguel started running through the hallways in search of Hawk, who hadn't appeared for a while. Dash took a deep breath and muttered, I hope it's not what we're all thinking. After murmuring that, Dash also ran off at a speed faster than Devon's, and soon he disappeared from the hallways. Eddie stayed looking at those guys who had nothing to do with this problem and wondered, what the hell is going on? Julio, how are you feeling? Jack could see some bruises on Julio's face, and he was certainly getting a bit angry, something that had never happened before. Julio was surprised to see Jack and said with some nervousness, I'm fine. Why do you ask? We heard that you were being intimidated by a certain group of guys. How many were really bothering you? Jerry asked after a moment of consideration. Julio didn't think much and said, there were three, but there's nothing to worry about. I'm sure they won't mess with me again. After the beating Hawk gave them, he was sure he wouldn't be bullied again, and he truly hoped it would stay that way. He couldn't bear to be a burden to someone else, and it was certainly not a problem that needed attention. But all Jack was looking for was an answer to head towards the bathrooms. Jerry, on the other hand, was very calm and said, relax, Jack will take care of it. Take care of what? Julio asked, clearly confused. But Jerry didn't answer his words, instead, he walked slowly forward where all the action was supposed to start, of which he would only be a simple spectator. At that moment, Hawk was coming out of the bathroom, followed by Dimitri and Mitch. They were all talking about what had happened, and they listened attentively as Hawk had become a hero. I'm sure this will bring us big problems. How could you fight at a school other than ours? With a scandal like this, I'm sure you could even get expelled. Dimitri was not happy about the fight Hawk claimed to have won. 
But Mitch, like a true Cobra Kai, said, Stop being such a wuss. Nothing will happen. Hawk nodded and said, That crap you learn with Mr. LaRusso is making you even softer. I can't believe it. Dimitri was about to walk away from this stew of idiots with burnt brains, when suddenly he saw that there was a long-haired guy blocking their way. Then I hit him in the stomach so hard that he fell to his knees, Hawk said, throwing a punch in the air. Mitch smiled and said, I should definitely learn to punch like that. With a punch like that, we could knock out our rivals. We should quickly return to the group before someone else is sent to look for us, Dimitri said, passing by Jack, who appeared in front of the man, unexpectedly, was held by the arm. You shouldn't have hit my friend, you'll have to pay for that, Jack said, staring directly at Dimitri. Dimitri understood what was going on and said, you've got the wrong people. If you'll excuse me, I have to meet a teacher, so it's better if you go on your way. But in a situation like this, how could Hawk stay silent? In his view, Jack was friends with the bullies who were bothering a defenseless kid, so he took a step forward and said, you should discard the trash of a friend you have. Jack looked at Hawk and said, you shouldn't have said that. And you shouldn't have stopped us. Hawk's muscles tensed, he raised his fists, and after looking seriously at Jack, he mockingly smirked as he approached him confidently. Faced with a direct punch to the face, to everyone's surprise, Jack showed not the slightest sign of avoiding this blow. At this scene, Dimitri knew that they were in trouble. Bam. Just as Hawk's punch was about to hit his face, Jack finally made a move. He extended his hand towards the punch, and upon receiving the full impact, he held it with strength. To everyone's surprise, Jack was able to stop Hawk's punch, making those who thought the fight would end quickly alert, as they realized Jack was not just an angry kid. How can this be? This unimaginable scene left Dimitri and Mitch stunned. How could it be that Jack had the strength to stop Hawk's punch without much effort? Even Hawk's expression changed a lot at that moment. From what he could feel, Jack's grip was tightening, and the pressure force exerted on his fist was becoming increasingly stronger, even becoming painful. And in the face of this, Hawk realized that he wasn't facing someone normal. That stance, the attack, and the strength are not ordinary if you train in martial arts, you should only use them for competition, not to intimidate defenseless people, Jack said with a cold expression. This must be a misunderstanding, thought Dimitri, but at this point, he could do nothing but act on the side he believed was right and stand by Hawk. So, you also know martial arts, that'll make it fair, Hawk said before throwing a straight kick to Jack's stomach, who still held him. Bam. 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 With this sudden change of movements, Jack began to dodge the attacks Hale was making. Dimitri, who wanted to stay on the sidelines, soon saw Jerry staring at him, and after understanding his intentions, he said, you should also consider your intentions. Let's go. Jerry, standing next to Jack, felt full of confidence, and soon launched himself to fight with Dimitri, who immediately began to deflect the blows. Damn it, Hawk, let's finish this bully. Mitch shouted, but at that moment, a blonde girl appeared in front of him, and upon this scene, he said, I don't fight with girls. Kim, who looked at Jack fighting Hawk, shifted her attention to Mitch and said, then get ready to get beaten up. Bam. Bam. In an instant, a large-scale fight erupted, and the students in the surroundings preferred to block the passage, so that no teacher would intervene until the fight was over. Bam. The students who were in the audience watched as Hawk's body was sent flying backward after receiving a kick from Jack that ultimately knocked him to the ground. Mitch's situation was no better, and after fighting seriously, he realized he was no match for a beautiful girl who fought much better than him. Shortly after, he also fell to the ground, right next to Hawk. The only one standing now was Dimitri, who had hit Jerry's body several times as he continued to attack, and at that moment, when he saw Hawk on the ground, he murmured, I think now is a perfect time to get out of this place. Move aside. Dash shouted, pushing people to the sides, and at that moment, he saw Hawk getting up from the ground. Looking at Dash, who had appeared, Hawk immediately approached him and said, Dash, that guy is very strong. What the hell happened? Dash asked, looking at Hawk's sorry state. To be more observant, he knew perfectly well that he was not a weak person. Hawk looked at Jack on the other side and said, We were on our way back, but we ran into that group of guys who caused us trouble after saving a kid who was being bullied by a group of idiots. Hawk. Miguel arrived shortly after and quickly approached his friend. Dimitri had stepped back after knowing that things seemed to have calmed down, and upon seeing Miguel, he sighed in relief. Dash took a step forward at that moment, and looking at Jack, he said in a cold tone, Why don't you consider leaving it as it is? You've taken things too far, but now you can end it well. What do you think? Your friends should apologize first to the one they hit. Do you think you can go through life abusing people without facing consequences? Jack was angry with Dash's calm attitude, so after considering it, he was even more decisive. They have been beaten enough. Do you still want to go on? 
Dash couldn't allow Jack to attack his friends again, regardless of the situation. In a scene like this, he would first offend those he cared about, and then ask what really happened. Kim looked at Dash, and after a little consideration, she said, I thought you were a good guy, but it turns out you're just as trash as everyone else who hides their dark side with a noble smile. Watch your words, damn bitch, or I'll sew your lips shut with punches. At that moment, Devin arrived just in time to hear Kim incriminate Dash with cruel words. Mitch, who was still on the ground, smiled when he saw Devin. He knew perfectly well that Dash's girlfriend would take care of that pretty blonde-haired girl. Kim looked at Devin and frowned. I thought you wouldn't get involved in things like this, but it seems I'm wrong. If you think you can get away with what you just said to my boyfriend, you're very wrong. Think very carefully about what you're going to do next. Devin said, walking slowly forward. Kim wasn't afraid of Devin, and since her last defeat with her, she wanted to know if she was stronger. So, she faced her, and after Dash bowed to Jack, everything seemed to tense up. Jerry, who was on the side, looked at Miguel and, feeling inspired by that scene, said, You, intimidated boy, come fight with the Karate King. Miguel pointed at himself, astonished, and after seeing how Dash and Devin were about to start a fight, he also approached, but he had other intentions and said, Shouldn't it be time to retreat? There are times when one does not retreat. Dash said, assuming his classic kung fu fighting stance. Jack also took Dash seriously, and at one point, both took a step forward in unison. Shortly after, their fists collided, and both entered into rapid attacks. Bam. On the other side, Devin initiated her attacks with powerful kicks, to which Kim could only respond by dodging. What's happening? The Leo approached after seeing the commotion, and seeing unfamiliar people fighting with Jack, he asked with some confusion. Karatik is fighting, buddy, damn, this is incredible. Hum. 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 A series of loud blows echoed from Dash and Jack's sides, both desperately trying to maintain their stance in the center. However, as the intensity grew, Jack began to show signs of stepping back. Observing that, in terms of strength, they weren't very different, Dash knew that in speed, endurance, and experience, he was superior. He utilized all these factors in this exchange of blows. Dash focused, attentively observing Jack's fighting style. A peculiar emotion grew in his chest as he received and countered each blow very effectively. Hum. Hum. When Jack's fist and Dash's palm collided, both stepped back, this time showing expressions of indifference. The force came from the fist, but the effective attack was due to Dash's palm hitting a vital area. The pressure points are very sensitive to blows, and if you hit them with too much force, you'll be numb for a few minutes, Dash said, watching Jack seemingly complain about the pain where he had been hit. Don't underestimate me. From the previous exchange, Jack deduced Dash's strength and became even more alert. However, perhaps because they were the same age, he thought their skills wouldn't be too far apart. Now. Jack's speed and strength changed in an instant. His movements stopped holding back because he knew he was facing an opponent who didn't hold back in fights, so he went all out this time. Faced with such rough attacks, Dash frowned, and his posture suddenly changed, using the defense Mr. Han had taught him. However, he was not as rigid as before and counterattacked more fluidly, regardless of what was happening around him. Supported by the defensive style he was using, along with mastery of different martial arts, Dash calmly managed to land several effective blows against Jack, which, in a normal fight, would be valid points in a competition. In just 10 exchanges, Jack's offensive changed several times, and sometimes his blows targeted much more delicate areas when hit with his strength. I have to be faster, Dash thought as he leaned and attacked Jack's feet, successfully bringing him down with this sudden move. Boom. Once on the ground, using his excellent jiu-jitsu skills, Dash restrained Jack in a few seconds. Now, do you want to stop? Jack, still exerting force, didn't think Dash was so versatile, so he replied, let me stand up, and we'll continue fighting. I'd be glad to fight you, but in a different way. Obviously, there's a great misunderstanding, so I'd like to resolve it by talking before we both get into trouble. Dash, he now had complete control of the fight, wanted to stop before a teacher arrived on the scene. Jack, now defenseless, wanted to stop, but disagreed with accepting defeat from a possible bully. On the other hand, Devin and Kim had reached a stalemate where the results of their fight, due to the confined space, would be determined by endurance, and in this, few could match Devin. In terms of combat, Devin was superior, but Kim managed to resist, and thanks to this, she was not defeated. However, the strength hidden in Devin's muscles was significant, as she had never been defeated since she started training Kung Fu every day. Hum. Hum. With a double kick, Devin connected both kicks to Kim's shoulders, and just as she was about to stand up in a jump, she could see several teachers with security guards approaching the area. Stop now. Everyone stop right now. 
A thunderous shout was heard, and everyone instinctively stopped attacking. Dash stepped back a bit and looked at Devin, who had also stopped. Jack, who had stood up, looked at Dash, and after seeing the results of the fights, knew they had lost completely. Jerry, who luckily was still alive, looked at Jack and couldn't believe how he couldn't defeat Dash, who seemed not to be weaker in terms of strength. What do you think you're doing? Everyone to the principal's office right now. Daisy looked at all her students and couldn't believe that the calm debate kids were martial artists. Dimitri, who was the talkative one, said, in our defense, I'll say they attacked us first. Daisy, who least wanted this right now, whispered, be quiet. That's what I was about to do. This is outrageous. How exactly did a fight break out with the students we invited to our facilities for the debate? Asked the director of Seaford High School. Daisy heard all this commotion as she was in the school board meeting, and had to find a solution with the teachers of this place. Carmen, Daisy's rival, said in a cold tone, we know that the kids we invited from Del Valle School, were the ones causing the problem. How can we deal with them based on our rules? You're jumping to conclusions Carmen. You can't sentence my students based on the arguments of a few confused kids from your school. Daisy coldly halted Carmen's arguments, and, looking at the director, said, From what I heard, my kids defended one of your students who was being attacked by his classmates. Then his friends came, and they confused the benefactors with the culprits. The director furrowed his brows and, looking at Daisy, asked, Are you saying this whole fight was based on a misunderstanding? That's too hasty to consider, Carmen said, discreetly looking at Daisy. Daisy looked at Carmen and asked, What exactly do you want to confirm? They can't get away with causing such a big commotion. How exactly do you want us to resolve this problem? Daisy simply replied, As far as I know, this problem is more than resolved with the statement of the affected boy. As far as we are concerned, your students soon sought out mine and started fighting. Yes, and your students beat ours, Carmen claimed, making an essential point. Daisy furrowed her brows and asked, Do you want my students to be the only ones beaten? They only responded to the aggression your school students proposed. The director was sweating cold seeing how these two teachers seemed closer to blows, so intervening, he asked, We're not looking for a culprit, what we want is a damn solution, so we don't have parents on our backs for the entire month. How about a tournament? Carmen looked at Daisy challengingly and pointed out, We can solve this problem like a simple dispute fight between two karate groups that have been in rivalry for a long time. Our student Jack placed second a few years ago in a major tournament. Now that you mention it, it makes sense, the director responded, very interested. Do you really want to solve this with a tournament between schools? I don't know how many students you have who know karate, but we have some very competent ones, so it would be fun if they lose overwhelmingly, Daisy said coldly, looking at Carmen with a smug smile. The director choked on the coffee he was drinking, now more relaxed, knowing there was a solution to their future problems. Carmen exploded and said, you're as arrogant as the last time we saw each other. Have you even thought that's unpleasant? And why do you think I keep behaving the same way? If you can't even maintain composure in a professional conversation, that speaks much worse of you. We could also apply to have a teacher fight, Carmen said, taking off her glasses. No tournament is necessary. Daisy said, turning around, and chaos erupted in the teacher's lounge. Young ladies, stop. In a separate room, Dash looked at Jack, who was sitting in front of him, and asked, So, will your dojo participate in the National Karate Club tournament? We're working on it. Who wouldn't be interested in having a gold medal? Kim seemed calmer and responded directly. Who would have thought that all this mess was due to a misunderstanding? Mental agility also needs to be trained, murmured Devin, still a bit upset. Hawk, who was in the background, muttered, exactly, they should apologize. Jack looked at Hawk and said, you attack me first. How is this supposed to be resolved just by talking? Well, by talking. Dash muttered these words but also looked at Hawk, who was like a soldier waiting to be sent into battle. Eddie, who hadn't fought, asked, So, what am I doing here if I didn't get involved in any trouble? Is he strong? Devin, sitting next to Dash, looked at him and asked a question. In simple terms, Jack could be even stronger. Dash could say that achieving such strength would be impossible, unless they trained the same way he did, but it would still be very challenging. However, apparently, Jack didn't train with much intensity since childhood, and that's why he was superior, but not by much. In other words, Jack's talent is even greater than Cheng's, speaking in solid terms. After the confrontation with Jack, Dash realized that he's truly someone who could go very far in terms of fights, and could even become a real problem if he improves further. He's strong, I'm afraid very few in our dojo could pose a challenge to him, Dash said while looking at his leg, slightly reddened from the blows he had deflected a moment ago. 
Even after starting the process to strengthen his bones, he still felt a lot of pain after receiving Jack's blows, something that hadn't happened before. Hawk, who had been completely defeated, looked at the school with frustration and said, I knew I shouldn't have gotten involved in things that didn't concern me. You did the right thing, if all of this was to save a guy, I don't mind being hit, Dimitri said, feeling that Eli, who was his best friend, was changing for the better. At that moment, Miguel couldn't help but sigh. He caught a glimpse of Dash's fight, and could tell that Jack was very strong more than he expected. So he couldn't stop now that he had won a tournament, he had to be much stronger if he didn't want to feel helpless against these rivals. Well, guys, I can't say things went well, but we definitely didn't do anything wrong today. Not only did we win the debate, but we also did the right thing. Dash pointed to some kids in the front seats of the bus and said, That's why I have a gift for you, a unique one, by the way. At that moment, the kids distributed several boxes of watches, and Dash pointed out, Maybe now you don't appreciate the watch in your hands much, but when you're adults, it will be something valuable that people look at firsthand when having a conversation with you. Devin looked smilingly as Dash, on every opportunity he could, gave gifts to others and said, Aren't you worried about what might happen to us? You heard it, Professor Daisy said everything was in our favor. Dash didn't worry about such small things. Although they fought somewhat like gangsters, he hoped this fight wouldn't cause major problems, since no one was seriously injured, and there wasn't an extensive brawl. While everyone discussed the fight, Daisy returned to the bus, and after seeing her students so calm as if they hadn't been involved in a fight a moment ago, she waited for everyone to quiet down. Silence, everyone, be quiet. Devin shouted, looking at Professor Daisy, standing in silence. Dash was the first to ask, what will you decide? All of you will be suspended for the rest of the week, those involved in the club will be suspended from activities until further notice, and in addition to that, you will participate in something very important. After saying that, Daisy fell silent for a moment, as if somehow contemplating whether to say it now or after they had arrived home. Will we participate in something, like community service? Hawk jumped from his seat and shouted, Never, I won't help pick up dog poop. Friend, who the hell is talking about cat poop? Demetri looked at Hawk with confusion. Mitch, who was eating, murmured, Yeah, I don't think it's cat poop, it could be a dog or even a bear like in the movies, that was terrifying. Daisy furrowed her brows, ignoring the weird guys in her group, and said, We have decided that to solve future problems in this school, there will be a karate tournament in which you will represent the school and fight officially. A tournament. Dash didn't expect this decision. Devin smiled slightly and said, It seems like this is much better. All of us. I don't know karate. A bespectacled boy refused to fight. Hawk on the side said, Don't be an idiot, only those who know karate will fight in the tournament. That's right, you will form a unique group among all those who know karate, and the best among you will represent us in this friendly tournament, Daisy said after considering it a lot, and pointing out, if you lose, you will be expelled for much longer. And if we win, the whole school will love you. A few hours later, some decided to gather to discuss seriously what they would do in the tournament. Representing the students of Cobra Kai, Miguel was present, Robbie was also at the meeting, and obviously, Dash represented the students of Sakura Bushido, accompanied by Devin. Not to mention the tense situation, but at that moment, Dash focused on eating, and Devin next to him did the same. So, why exactly did you call me? Robbie felt very confused and couldn't stand the fact that he was at the same table as the Cobra Kai members. This is uncomfortable for everyone, but we really wanted to consider you, so we called you to attend the meeting. Devin nudged Dash to focus. Dash, who was enjoying his large steak, looked at Robbie and nodded. Basically, there were a series of misunderstandings that ended in a big fight with several karatekas from Seaford High School. Now, to solve things, we'll have a tournament between both schools. And what does that have to do with me and Miyagi-Do? Robbie asked, still not understanding. Hawk, who had been watching him from the start, said, I told you, it was a bad idea to call him from the beginning, and no one listened to me. Looking at Robbie, who openly showed his hostility, Dash, a bit more serious, said, listen very well. I was assigned the task of selecting the team, and knowing that we're not the only ones training martial arts, we wanted to consider you so as not to leave you out. At the end of the day, we will represent the school, and we thought it was ugly not to have you in mind. We heard that you're returning to school, and knowing where you train, we just took you into account. Whether you want to participate or not will be your problem. Seeing your attitudes, we have done the minimum to include you all, Devin said a bit abruptly. Miguel, who seemed calmer than usual, said, You heard it, whether you accept it or not, that will be your problem. What were you doing at a different school? Robbie asked just to satisfy his curiosity. Devin, who was eating ice cream, said, A debate competition, and we won, by the way. 
It was overwhelming. Not only did they beat them with words, but also with fists. Hawk said with a slightly swollen eye, but with high morale. Looking at Robbie's compassed attitude, Dash knew he was holding back because he had called him. Otherwise, he was sure he wouldn't have shown up, so Dash thanked him for that. Dash reached for his phone and said, You must understand that your problems are not our problems. You can hate each other or be enemies, and that will still not matter to me, as long as you solve those problems in special competitions. We have that in mind, there will be no more attacks between dojos, Miguel said, convinced of his words. But Robbie, upon hearing this, furrowed his brows slightly. Of course, there won't be any more attacks after they destroyed our dojo. We repaired it, Hawk said he was a little hurt by these words. They left the damn stone upside down. Who puts a damn stone in the middle of their dojo? Dash sighed wearily and said, Hey, those who fight end up loving each other. You have problems that you can solve, you just need to take a step forward, and whoever is to blame needs to accept their mistakes. This conversation is getting more and more awkward, Miguel said, growing more impatient. Dimitri, who was eating in a corner of the table, said, Believe me, I felt uncomfortable on the trip, but that changed as we survived. Robbie looked at Dimitri and asked, Did you travel to the debate with them? Did they do something to you? We're not criminals, Miguel said, looking at Robbie with furrowed brows. Hawk nodded and said, although I wanted to hit him, the guy from Seaford School did better than I thought. Once again, we have to admit that Miyagi do create sweet people. Then why did I beat you in the tournament? Robbie asked, annoyed by Hawk's comments. Devon, who was focused on her ice cream, said, please, ladies, can't you stay still for a while? Take a deep breath and stop talking about your marital problems. Well, we'll talk later about what we'll do on the school sports field, Miguel said as he got up from the table. Robbie didn't say another word and also got up. One by one, they left the restaurant, leaving only Devon, Dimitri, and Dash, who were still eating. I don't want to be a party pooper, but who will pay the bill? Dimitri felt a bit terrified, seeing that only the three of them remained. Devon looked at some untouched meals and told a nearby waiter, Excuse me, can you pack those dishes for me? I'll pay Dash ended up paying the entire bill in the end. Since the day ended with good relations among all the dojos, or so they all wanted to believe, Dash received an email the next day, detailing the rules for the tournament scheduled a week later. At Devon's house, Dash sat in the living room with printed sheets of information that he needed to share with everyone. The date is very convenient for coordinating among all of us. The last meeting ended quite badly. Devon approached with a jar of fruits and placed them on the table. It seems that the matchups will be in pairs, we will be fighting in pairs, and the victory will be determined by the points between both participants, Dash said after understanding a bit more about the tournament. Devon approached, and after reading a bit, he nodded in understanding. If the tournaments are in pairs, it means that there will only be a few participating pairs. After hearing Devon's words, Dash's hand, which was between the information sheets, began searching through them. Upon finding what he wanted, he said, we can bring 5 pairs, 10 people at most, and I suppose there will be a total of 10 pairs. That would be 20 competitors, and half of them would be women. Are there really that many women in martial arts schools at that place? Devon's confused voice stood out when asking this question. That's the same thing she asked Ash's gaze was perplexed. His eyebrows furrowed as he contemplated the possibilities, and after a while, he looked at Devon. Indeed, it was known that the wisest decisions were made by her, so he awaited a response. In this way, Dash was merely a figure in which he combined his ideals with Devon's to make a more open decision. Nevertheless, considering that there are students from three karate schools, he assumed that everything should be very fair. Achieving balance in everything is impossible, given that there are still problems. However, Dash wanted to find a kind of peace in a competition that could bring them all together. It's not so bad now that he thinks about it. Maybe many participants in this competition can find some redemption and fix their problems. I seem to recall. A week ago, when we were training with Cobra Kai, I heard that Miguel showed some interest in Tori do you think that could complicate things within the group? We could leave someone out if you think they would be a problem, Devin murmured as she sat down to watch some television. Dash knew about this because she told him, and at that moment, he subtly mentioned it to Miguel. As for whether he understood the message or not, that wasn't his problem. All I know is that we need to come together if we want to win this in a cool way. If we're separated, it would look too bad, Dash said as he reclined on the couch. Sakura Bushido Martial Arts School. A tournament in pairs. Victor jumped with excitement. Dash sighed deeply and said, from Sakura Bushido Devon, Sophia, me, and you. Only four. There's a limit on participants, so those numbers are more than fair. We'll bring two teams, and Cobra Kai will bring two teams, leaving one for Miyagi-Do, because we know their limited numbers. Devon approached while wiping off the sweat. 
Chosen, who was nearby, asked, Will you need any sensei to accompany you? We should ask, it would be interesting to see. With so many masters, it would be interesting to see Johnny and Daniel together in a tournament, fighting on the same side. That would precisely calm Dash from so many strong emotions. Attention. Dash shouted while looking at all the students who knew karate at the school. Among the group were Sam, Robbie, and most of the Cobra Kai kids, along with all the apprentices from Sakura Bushido, who had been called by the physical education teacher. Most of us are suspended from school, but now they depend on us to win the skills exchange with Seaford High School. Looking at everyone, Dash paused, fixed his gaze on Sam, who seemed a bit uncomfortable being in this place, and said, Some of you may not know what's going on, but to put you in context, we had some misunderstandings that ended up creating a tournament between our school and Seaford High School. Hawk smiled slightly, feeling a bit like the protagonist of these events, because, literally, it was his fault that they now had this slight problem, which he didn't see as a bad thing for those who trained in karate. Dash looked at everyone seriously and said, The tournament rules are very simple. All of us can participate, but only five teams of two will be the protagonists. One man and one woman, five teams, and the rest will be left to your discretion. Will we be a team, or will the five teams fight for the spot? Miguel asked, slightly confused by Dash's ambiguous words. In response to this question, Dimitri, who was also present, asked, Do the teams have to be mandatory mixed? That could be a bit problematic. What will happen with binary genders? They might consider this discriminatory. No one is interested in fighting, let alone making a scandal over a karate tournament, thought Robbie, but he didn't say anything. His eyes focused on Sam, who was next to him, and he thought that the two of them could achieve good results in this tournament if they participated. Devin, who was sitting in front of everyone, looked at Dash and knew that, due to the limited numbers, only the best would be considered. Tori, on the side, asked, will I need to participate? Honestly, your martial arts school has the best male and female students. Why bother with such a long selection process? Dash doesn't want to leave anyone out of consideration, especially when he wants problems outside of special competitions to be completely erased from all karate schools, replied Devin without even looking at Tori, who had understood the reason. Aisha, who was also present, said, at least that would calm everyone's nerves a bit, even though there are no problems, they're still rigid in their behaviors. That doesn't matter, we won't try to be friends, after all, said Tori, looking at Sam, who was among those present. Devin had to agree with Tori, they wouldn't be friends, and there was no need to be. As long as they didn't cause problems, what happened afterward wasn't anyone's concern. It's time to select the teams. I'll name the five teams, and if anyone disagrees, they can always challenge one of the selected to take their place. As Dash said this, he took a list from his smart tablet. Seeing everyone watching him, Dash smiled and said, The first team is Hawk with Aisha. Hawk smiled slightly, knowing that he was one of the selected. Only in this way could he defeat that guy named Jack, who had easily defeated him before. Miguel and Tori. Victor with Sophia. Robbie with Samantha. Dash paused and pointed. The last spot will be Devin and me. Once the list was given, everyone agreed too much with the selections, and no one objected. Mitch was interested in participating, but he wasn't good enough to beat any of the men, so he gave up. Well, I wouldn't have considered myself among the selected anyway, Dimitri said without being disappointed by this result. Miguel looked at Tori and nodded slightly. He had changed slightly in terms of his attitude toward his crush. What happened afterward was quite good, he felt better, and he saw everything from a more mature perspective. Before starting with the training, Dash pointed out, I'm aware that some of you feel uncomfortable interacting with some people in this place, but that's not my problem, and I want you to keep in mind that all of you can leave if you want. Do you want to do it? Sam asked Robbie, who had been silent from the beginning. Robbie thought about it for a bit and said, I don't really care, I'll do what you say. We could give it a try. Sam murmured, slightly interested. In the end, the selected ones stayed, and the others would serve as reserves in case any problems arose. Since the selection of the participants ended, the atmosphere in the gym, now entirely reserved for them, has become even livelier. From early in the morning, many students with free classes came to watch the training of the new karate team that would represent the school in a tournament. Everyone knew about the growing karate fever, and now that the school had selected a team to represent them in a school-funded competition, everyone showed even more interest in knowing how good their teams were. Observing the eager crowd, Dash focused solely on paying attention to those who would be a team from now on. I am pleased to welcome you to this provisional team that I am creating for the representation of this school. I want to understand that you all are committed to sharing your experiences and having a healthy coexistence while we await the day of the tournament, which will be in approximately a month. 
Dash looked at everyone and pointed out, although we will have the support of the school in our grades, we must keep in mind that we need to maintain the level for the next few months, and show that participating in this tournament will not affect us negatively. In the gym, nine students were listening to Dash's words as he assumed the leadership of the team without anyone getting upset about it. In terms of experience, Dash surpassed them all, and could easily lead this group without the assistance of any sensei since he was a black belt. You may think you are strong. I'm not asking you to attend the training sessions, since each of you will train in your martial arts school, but I want you to consider which opponents you will face, and one of them is Jack, who will surely be on a team with a girl named Kim. Dash pointed to a screen that had been brought to show them one of the fights between the two mentioned. After hearing Dash's words, everyone fixed their eyes on the replays of the matches, and was surprised to see the high level of those two competitors, who would be their biggest threat. Their experience may be at your level, but I can forcefully tell you that you are not prepared to take Jack's hits. As for Kim, she has a level similar to Devon's. I don't recommend underestimating these competitors, you have not faced strong opponents in international competitions, and I can understand that your judgment is clouded. That's why I emphasize this. Hurabi was surprised. His eyebrows furrowed as he watched Jack's movements and listened to Dash's fluid explanation. Sam wanted to ask why Dash was so sure their judgments were clouded, but remembering that he had recently won a mixed martial arts tournament, she decided not to say anything and remained silent. Unlike Devin, she quit competitions after that defeat, so she had to accept that she was weaker. In this way, Dash showed a bit more about Kim's karate, and at the end, he wanted to share classes with everyone. The school demanded unity and a good demonstration to ensure they had the right students, so by supervising their training, they knew that the choices could not have been better. What I teach is discipline, behavior, and character. It's unnecessary for us to handle the same fighting style, as long as you understand character, it's more than enough to win. Dash said with a cold tone, assuming his role as an instructor. Do you all want to train? Hawk looked at everyone silently and said, we have to, what will you teach us? The coronation. Dash assumed that everyone had a certain level of understanding and shouted, everyone in standard guard position, right fist forward, punch. Yes. Everyone was stunned as they watched the absolute concentration of Devin, Victor, and Sophia, while following the instructions Dash was giving them. Once again, right fist, uppercut, yes. Yes. Straight right kick, yes. Yes. In just a few minutes, they can find themselves, and without exchanging any words, they let themselves be guided by Dash's instructions. In that moment of fervor, no one realized that they had next to them someone they disliked, someone they had problems with. In the end, they discovered that it didn't matter. Nobody has enemies after all, one creates their own enemies, and only oneself can leave those enemies behind. When they learn to do something like that, nothing in this life will be impossible. Right punch, two punch combo. Yes. 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 In the distance, the school principal watched the performance of her students, and a charming smile appeared on her face. What do you think? Daisy asked, looking at the principal more excited than usual. When you mentioned the tournament, I almost had a heart attack, but now that I see the performance of our students, I realize it was a wise choice. If we win this tournament, our school will rise in rank, and we may gain more reputation. In the distance, a figure watched the young people's training and furrowed their brows slightly. This is becoming a problem Cress muttered as he saw how several of his guys were getting along with those who should be their enemies. In situations like this, the only way to solve everything is to eliminate the problem from the path and move on. Dash was a guy who was uniting enemies when they should be eliminating rivals. Hey, kid, want to earn a few dollars? Cress asked, looking at a guy who was in the crowd. How much money do you have, old man? Enough for you to spend with your friends. Cress responded, slightly annoyed by the tone of that young man. Alright, what do you want? I need you to get me a cell phone from my daughter. Cress looked at Devin, who was sitting in the distance, and how she was always watching Dash. The only option he has now is to remove the problems from the path. This is the simplest option because Devin was so connected to Dash that it was easy to come up with a feasible plan. Starting his plan, Cress left the school where the training was taking place, and soon arrived at a bar where there were only two kinds of people. Those who wanted to earn money and alcoholics who had nothing better to do. When he sat down, he ordered a bottle of beer and sat in silence. He knew that if he wanted to find the right people to solve his problems, this place was the best for what he wanted to do. He had a chicken mask look at the video, someone managed to record how that bastard hit my little brother. Said a man with tattoos on his face. How do you expect us to find someone if we only know they have a chicken mask? A slightly drunk man looked with confusion at the video, and everyone was being beaten by a guy with a chicken mask. 
They put my little brother in prison because of that son of a bitch. When I find him, I'm going to kill him. Maybe this is a coincidence, but Cress, with his sharp eyes, could see the video that these gang members were watching, and seeing that mask, a vague idea lit up in his memories. That mask Cress could see the chicken mask, and vaguely remembered how, in the lockers where Dash changed, he had that same chicken mask. He had seen the information channel where two figures with chicken masks taught various karate moves, that same mask was the one shown in the video, and precisely the same one that Dash had in his locker, so it was more than obvious to guess the answer. I think I know the answer to your questions. Cress smiled coldly as he stood up and approached the gang members. The tattooed man looked at Cress and asked, Are you talking to us? I just heard your conversation, and I've seen that chicken mask somewhere else. I can now say that we have a common enemy, and if you listen to me, we may each achieve our goal. Cress said with a shrewd smile. In the woman's locker room, Devon had changed into her sportswear and looked in her locker for her cell phone. Where did I leave it? Devon was confused for a moment. Sophia beside her asked, is something wrong, my dear queen? My cell phone, I can't find it. Searching for it everywhere, Devon couldn't help but be confused. She walked out of the locker rooms in search of her cell phone, but no matter where she looked, she couldn't find anything. You probably left it in the general locker. Sophia said, looking at Devon, who was more worried than usual. Devon sighed. She could still track her cell phone later, but it was still worrisome. Tori approached from afar and asked, are you ready to go? Yes, Devon nodded as she headed towards the exit and left the school to go eat with her friends. Devon, I heard someone was looking for me at the martial arts school. How about we meet later? Dash said as he left the school, looking at Devon and the others waiting for him to eat. Is there a problem? Tori asked, noticing Dash's serious expression. Dash relaxed his expression and said, not at all, but I think I need to go to that place as soon as possible. Take care. You know where we'll be, so you can find us later, Devon said as she bid farewell to Dash, who seemed to be in a hurry. Dash got into his car and looked at the message that literally said, Daddy is in the USA. You wanted a man of war. Well, here's one. Waiting for you outside Sakura Bushido. The only person who could come up with sending him that message was Santiago since he was the only man who knew the name of his dojo outside the country, except for Dri, Cheng, and everyone in China. If that old drunkard comes to the school, Mr. Chosen will kick him out. Dash murmured, slightly nervous about something silly happening. Driving at the maximum speed allowed, he went to refill his car's gas tank as it was running low. After paying, he arrived at Sakura Bushido, quickly parked his car, and went in to check if that person was outside. Has a strange old man come here looking for me? Dash asked a guard who was on duty at the entrance. The guard, who looked at Dash, nodded. There was a strange man, he asked for you, but then he got hungry and left, saying he would come back later. He asked about some adult clubs, but I told him I didn't know any. That's definitely Santiago Dash murmured as he entered. But remembering something, he said, if he comes again, don't forget to call me directly. If his name is Santiago, you can let him in. Got it. Once in the dojo, Dash didn't want to go back immediately, so he went to the changing rooms to freshen up and do some muscle memory exercises. In his last serious encounter, he felt that somehow he could achieve more. He didn't want to harm Jack, but he knew that if he focused his punches on less dangerous areas, he could cause a lot of pain without causing lasting damage. The sudden sensation of vibrating through the air made Dash realize an idea. Following this rhythm of movements, he soon clenched his fists, looked firmly ahead, and focused his punches on vulnerable areas, attacking forcefully and generating a loud sound in the air. He efficiently examined his punch and, following the same sensation, memorized many punches following his Northern Dragon Kung Fu style, moving in any situation, and knowing perfectly how to react to each one. But at that moment, while Dash was still moving from side to side, he heard his cell phone vibrating. Thinking it was the worker calling him, he quickly stopped. Devon. Dash was surprised. He didn't expect a call from his girlfriend, but he answered without any problem. Is something wrong? Come on, can't you stand being without your boyfriend for a whole day? The tone, the smile, and her personality were used when saying these words. Just when Dash expected a response from his girlfriend, a deep voice came out of the intercom. I'm sorry to tell you that I'm not your girlfriend. But if you want to see her without a scratch, you better show up at the exact location at the agreed upon time, or we'll start having fun with her. The voice ended the call without giving Dash time to respond. Looking at the call that was exactly from Devon's cell phone, Dash quickly left the martial arts school and headed to his car right after changing. Accelerating rapidly, Dash headed to the restaurant where Devon was, trying to call Tori and Aisha, but none of them answered, which made him even more nervous. Damn Dash gritted his teeth but didn't lose his composure. 
immediately parking outside the restaurant. He burst in through the door, looking at Tori, who was just getting up to leave. Tori, where is Devin? Surprised to see Dash behaving like that, Tori asked with concern, did something happen? Is Devin here or not? Dash asked with a louder voice. She left half an hour ago. Is everything okay? Tori knew something was definitely wrong. Without time, Dash said as he disregarded many traffic fines. It was late, night was falling. Without wasting time, Dash hung up the call and headed to the place where that strange voice had summoned him. I'm here. Show yourselves. Dash shouted with a cold voice, anger was visible in his gaze, and for the first time in his life, he was willing to kill if the situation demanded it. In the dark building, Dash could barely see what was happening inside, because the moonlight poorly illuminated the surroundings, making it almost impossible to know what was going on. The moment he announced his presence, a figure emerged from the darkness with a wicked smile. It seems you love your girlfriend more than usual. We couldn't have fun with her because you arrived too early. Tell me what you want to let her go. I can promise anything within my abilities, Dash said, clenching his fists. Don't be so pessimistic. Don't you want to chat with us? We've been paid well to take care of things around you. Aren't you interested in knowing who paid us? Asked the man with tattoos on his face. Dash could see him perfectly because the man held a lamp that faintly illuminated his face. Dash didn't flinch at all and said, I just need you to let Devin go from this place. I don't want anything else. In a situation like this, Dash needed to know how many people were in this place. However, no matter how much he looked around, he couldn't perceive anything other than darkness, which made him really nervous. If it was about money, I can give you double what they paid you. Doesn't that sound good? Dash asked, genuinely interested in their response. You're so boring. Shouldn't you have started with that in the first place? Anyway, as you propose, my answer to that would be a resounding no. In the streets, there's brotherhood, and that has codes that can't be broken under any circumstances. The man's voice became colder as he spoke. Looking at Dash fixedly, the tattooed man said, Do you remember one day you fought with some guys who were stealing simple wallets? What have you said? At that moment, Dash couldn't think of anything other than Devin, so he was very confused when he heard these words from the man. The man smiled slightly and said, One of those guys you hit went under pressure. Since he was older, he went straight to a very nasty prison, where he ended up stabbed several times in the ribs and died. Should that be my problem? Dash vaguely remembered how he had fought with several guys when he saved Robbie, but he was wearing a mask, so he didn't understand how these people knew about him. His name was Peiko, he died very young. Anyway, you can call me Peiko while I crush your head with this wooden bat, said Peiko as he moved a wooden bat from side to side in his hand. Dash put metal gloves on his hands, looked around, still very alert, and asked again, where is Devin? If you tell me, I won't break all the teeth in your horrible and stinking mouth. This bastard isn't listening, Peiko said with a white smile. At that moment, Dash received a phone call that he answered immediately. Who's speaking? Dash, where are you? A feminine voice came from the intercom, and Dash instantly identified it as Devin. Devin Dash, I lost my phone and forgot to mention it. Where are you right now? Devin asked with a tone full of concern, she was worried that Dash was looking for her. With a sigh of relief, Dash showed more confidence in this situation and said, I'm fine, some very clever guys tricked me. Pico, who knew that Dash had discovered the truth, smiled slightly. Well, it seems the fun is over. Now ours begins. Boom. At that moment, the lights of the building were turned on, forcing Dash to close his eyes, due to the pain it caused to see the light around him now. At the same time, a figure in the dark holding a wooden stick appeared behind Dash and, with ill intentions, aimed for his head. Crack. Who? Dash quickly covered the sides of his head, he couldn't see but heard someone behind him, so this is all he could do. Thud. A strong blow hit the back of his head, leaving Dash very dazed. The impact was so strong that it forced him to kneel, and for a moment, he felt sleepy. That was a damn good hit, Pico shouted, seeing Dash on the ground. Dash, who was dazed, felt a warm stream flowing down his head and passing through his back. With his knowledge, he didn't need to think about what it was, as he clearly felt that it was his blood. You will pay with blood for what happened to our brother. Thud. 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 At the same time, several men started kicking Dash all over his body. Those kicks were strong, ultimately forcing him to endure the blows. I'm going to kill them Dash muttered, trying to regain focus on his vision. However, it was simply impossible. Dash had to stay focused and, most importantly, awake. During his training with Devin, he learned to take hits, knowing the places he had to protect, and the ones that could withstand the blows. This was the only way not to be knocked out in this place, so it was precisely what he did. Hum. 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 
Minutes passed, and the six men took turns kicking Dash, who endured the kicks as best as he could. Some of the gang members were terrible at kicking, it seemed as if they were afraid of causing serious harm. This gave Dash a chance to gradually regain his senses. You damn idiot, do you know karate? That crap doesn't work on the streets. Look at you now, you're a mess. Shouted Peiko, breathing heavily from the continuous kicks. Yupiko, lost in his drug-induced haze, was surprised to hear Dash still talking. He asked, what did you say? Are you talking to me? You shouldn't have damn it, speak louder. You shouldn't have stopped. Keep him down. Peiko shouted as uncontrollable bleeding streamed from his mouth, the result of the earlier blow. Dash's chest rose and fell violently as he clenched his teeth. When he saw the first gang member approaching with a knife, he quickly unleashed a combination of punches with his brass knuckles on both hands. Boom. 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 Without mercy in his blows, Dash, consumed by anger, smashed the head of the first gang member, who appeared to be the largest. Blood sprayed onto his knuckles, but he didn't stop. But there were still more than three people around him. One of them ran towards him and managed to cut him slightly with a knife. However, at that moment, Dash stopped feeling pain and, in response, attacked more than five times on the nose and eyes of that gang member. Crack. 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 Broken nose, shattered teeth, jaws, ribs everything one could imagine was like paper when Dash's ruthless blows struck them. All the hatred he had left behind exploded with such force that Dash knew only one thing. Kill or be killed. Holding the head of one gang member who had long since stopped moving, Dash brought his head closer and bit off the ear of the man with one fierce bite. Needless to mention the amount of blood pouring around, but it was so shocking that the remaining two gang members holding a knife, each hesitated to attack. Ah. Dash dodged the first attack aimed at him with intentions to stab, but being attacked by two people, one of them managed to cut him. However, he felt nothing and, in response, delivered a powerful kick that broke the leg of one gang member who lacked muscles in his bones. With only one man left who could pose a threat, Dash took a step forward and, in just a few seconds, was already in front of that gang member. Before he could realize how he would be attacked, a violent kick landed on the gang member's neck. Crack. While Dash's leg fell violently on the neck of that gang member, in a matter of seconds, a series of blows flashed from his hands, landing on the head of the man. In less than 10 minutes, a loud and clear sound of bones breaking echoed in the illuminated building. Please don't hit me anymore, you're going to kill me. Those tearful murmurs were something that wouldn't stop Dash, now that he had started to satisfy his anger. When he saw that no one else was moving except for Peiko, who was running to grab the bat he had left on the ground before, he turned around and looked at Dash angrily. Do you think that thing will stop me from breaking your bones? Dash, swing towards Peiko, looked at him with burning hatred surging from within, and walked step by step towards him. Peiko felt fear. He didn't know what kind of monster this boy was, but he wasn't going to run. Lifting his guard, Dash, who had stopped listening, looked at Peiko and saw him approaching to strike. Crack. Receiving the blow on his left arm, Dash, still feeling no pain, extended his hand towards Peiko's ribs, and, with an explosive attack, felt that he had broken something. Ouch. The blow made Peiko writhe in pain, and just when he wanted to turn around to run, a choking sensation filled his body. Dash, who saw this, fell to his knees and repeatedly struck the head of the man who had tried to kill him. Anyone who dreams of touching a hair on my girlfriend with ill intentions will die. Dash shouted, feeling increasingly dizzy, and only after seeing Peiko's head covered in wounds did he stop. At that moment, when Dash breathed with relief, he felt a heavy sense of fatigue, and suddenly he couldn't move his body. And at that moment, a series of footsteps echoed in the distance. Tap tap. Tap tap. One more. Dash murmured before falling unconscious due to the head injury, but his eyes remained fixed on that figure in the darkness slowly approaching him, and helpless, he fell into unconsciousness. A sense of urgency persisted in his overwhelming feelings of aggression, but no matter what he felt, fatigue and sleep overcame him. This is a damn mess. Now you're fighting gang members in the streets at night. The man in the darkness looked at one of the gang members on the ground, pulling out a pistol and murmuring, but you certainly owe me a lot for helping me settle my debt. So, none of these guys who hurt you will leave here alive. If Dash were awake, he would know that the man in the darkness was Santiago, who had returned to the country after settling some debts and, knowing that the only place that would take him in was Sakura Bushido, visited the place upon his return. The only reason he briefly left Sakura Bushido wasn't because he wanted a hamburger, but because he had seen some suspicious men lurking outside the martial arts school. When those men were about to leave, he decided to follow them. He wanted to know why those men were watching the martial arts school, so he followed them from a distance. When they were about to act, he saw a car approaching the dark building. The surprise was greater when he realized that it was Dash who had come to this place. 
He perfectly understood what was happening. When he went for his weapon and entered the building, there was not a single man standing, which surprised him. By the time he approached, he saw the severe wounds on Dash's body, and a vivid image of the last time he saw this young man appeared in Santiago's mind. He first made sure that none of the men lying in the darkness could move. This is a lot of blood, Santiago muttered as he administered first aid to the unconscious Dash. He may be a martial artist, but times have changed, and now a bullet is more effective than a kick. One should not play the role of a street fighter when the opponent has a knife. While Santiago treated Dash's open wounds, he heard faint footsteps approaching behind him. As if sensing something, he turned around while aiming his pistol. Who are you? How's a kid? The voice did not answer Santiago, but instead asked a question. Santiago frowned and said, the kid is fine. If you're one of those gang members, you'd better be ready to die here like a damn scum. I'm not with them, I'm Mr. Kim, the kid's bodyguard. Mr. Kim, who had received a call from Mr. Chosen, rushed to this place, fearing something might happen to Dash. Seeing Mr. Kim's figure, Santiago lowered his weapon, turned around, and said, Dash will need a hospital as soon as possible. He managed to stop the bleeding from his wounds, but they need to be examined more seriously. Mr. Kim, everyone is in very bad shape. Chosen, who approached with two long swords, looked at Santiago and waited for his reaction before attacking him. Mr. Kim extended his hand and said, he's the one who gave first aid to Dash. He's not an enemy. Who are these people? Santiago was very confused, so he asked Mr. Kim directly, assuming he should be informed. But to his surprise, Mr. Kim knew nothing about it and replied, they might be extortionists, they set a trap for Dash, and in his urgency, he fell for it. You better leave this place. We've called the police, so it will be complicated to make the police understand who you are. Mr. Kim, realizing his mistake by not mentioning this earlier, advised Santiago. Santiago nodded, stood up, and quickly left the building before the police siren sounded. He took his car and left the area because he didn't have a good relationship with the authorities. As soon as the police arrived, they arrested the unconscious gang members and took Dash to the nearest hospital for medical attention. A few hours later, a man and a woman in suits stood in front of the Lee residence door, because they had some things to confirm. Knock, knock. A few minutes later, the door was opened by Mr. Zack, who was impressed by the people standing at his door. Curious, he asked, what can I do for you? I'm Detective Wayne, and she's my partner Maggie. We're here to ask your daughter a question about this. Wayne showed a plastic bag with Devon's broken and bloodied cell phone. Zack frowned and nodded, letting the detectives in. After they sat down, he called his daughter, who quickly came downstairs. Dad, who are these people? They're detectives, dear. Devon was surprised, looked at her cell phone in the plastic bag, and, recognizing it, felt a bad premonition. Miss Lee, approximately a few hours ago, your cell phone was used to send messages to Dash Hale, who, by his parents' words, is your boyfriend. I regret informing you this way, but he was attacked using a fairly common extortion method. We wanted to know from you. Did you know who stole your cell phone or where it was? Wei looked at Devon's expression and knew she wasn't involved, so he lost interest in seeking answers from her. He moved on to the next clue, which was to find out where Devon lost her cell phone. Is Dash injured? Zack was the first to ask upon learning that Dash was hurt. Maggie smiled slightly and said, the last we heard, he's stable. He hasn't woken up yet due to the serious head injuries, but it's not critical. My cell phone was stolen at school. I'm sure I had it in the gym, but after training, it disappeared. Devon tried to recall all the details. Wei nodded and asked, do you know if there are cameras in the gym? Yes, there are. After what happened at another school regarding a fight, they installed cameras throughout the school. Devon provided the detectives with a useful lead. Then that's it. You'll get your cell phone after the investigation is closed. Detective Wayne said this before standing up. Devon, who looked at her father, saw him nodding and saying, I'll get the car keys. Who do you think is behind this attack on a simple young man? Maggie looked at Wayne, who was gazing at the school Dash attended, and sighed. Wayne remained silent for a few minutes as he contemplated why Dash would be attacked and said, We ruled out any kind of kidnapping, because those weren't the intentions of those gang members. If we rule that out, it leaves revenge out of hatred or an attack for some specific reason that we don't know. I think the same. Something much more foolish than it seems should be involved, and the person who connected Dash Hale with those gang members, must be the same one who stole the girl's cell phone. Maggie said, understanding that if they found the person who stole the cell phone, they would get the answers they were looking for. When they reached this conclusion, both got out of the car and headed to the school, where a security guard was waiting, and the school principal, who had hurried to be aware of what the detectives would do, how is the student doing? 
Maggie looked at the woman asking this question and said, despite having some injuries on his body, it's nothing serious. Do you know if anyone from the school wanted to harm Dash? He's a good kid, he's in the debate club, so there are no people who exactly want to harm him. Everyone knows he comes from a wealthy family, so very few dared to bother him. What she meant was that in all these years, no one had problems with Dash where someone would want to seek revenge, so this further narrowed down the list of people looking to harm him. When they reached the control office, they accessed the recordings of the last 24 hours, and soon found the fragments from the gym. Just when the kids enter, I want to know if Devin has her cell phone, and who steals it from her. Maggie said, approaching the screen to also serve as a pair of additional eyes, observing what was happening. As the minutes passed, the first thing they discovered was that Devin did have her cell phone, but they still needed to find out when and who stole it. Speed it up more. Wayne couldn't understand the calmness, so he asked the person handling the playback of the recordings to speed it up. Maggie, who was watching the screen, looked at a specific boy approaching the benches where Devin had sat before, leaving her cell phone behind. Right at this point, stop. We got you. At that moment, Wayne quickly took a picture of the student who had taken Devin's cell phone and said, Madam Principal, it would save us a lot of time if you provided information about this student. I'll check in the database. The principal was silent and nodded. Maggie, who was focused on the screen, quickly said, Do you have recordings from before, but from the angle of the door? We have them, but it will take a little more time. Do whatever it takes, Wayne said as he walked away with Maggie to discuss the course of action they would take. Maggie, who was thinking, murmured, Do you think that kid knows who is involved? He should. A few hours after stealing that cell phone, Dash Hale received an anonymous message with an address where he was attacked, but he also received a call, so he probably knows. I found him. By the time they heard that, Wayne had ordered the arrest of the student who had stolen the cell phone, because they needed to know if that kid knew who he had given the phone to. San Francisco Hospital Private Room. Have they figured it out? Frederick asked coldly as he stayed with his son after his wife needed dressed. We found out who is behind all this. Shall we leave this job to the detectives? What will they do with the gang members? They will be deported to a foreign prison. As for the culprit, he is now on the run. Frederick looked at his son and, after thinking for a while, whispered, let's see how the detectives act. Send Mr. Anderson to put pressure on the police. That's what we'll do sir. Frederick, who looked at his son, smiled slightly at seeing Devin sleeping beside him. They were definitely made for each other, so he got up after knowing his son was not in danger. The next day, the sky was still covered with sculpted clouds, but the police had arrived at the house of the boy who had stolen his cell phone, and went straight into interrogation. Don't lie to us, we found you with the stolen cell phone used for the extortion call. Are you aware that someone almost died because you stole their phone? Wayne, without caring that he was interrogating a kid, was harsh with his words. Due to your age, you would be sent to a correctional facility, but the family of the affected boy is very powerful, and we won't handle your safety. However, as long as you tell us what we want to know, they won't seek revenge on a regrettable student who made a foolish mistake. Marcus, the boy who had stolen the phone, said, an old man approached me, asking me to steal a cell phone from his daughter. I just did it, but I never thought that old man had anything to do with the phone duel. Do you know who asked you to steal the cell phone? Maggie furrowed her brows slightly. I heard someone call him Sensei Kress, he should be a Cobra Kai teacher. Wayne looked at Maggie, and both nodded, knowing they had found the man. When Dash opened his eyes, it was too late. He felt a numb sensation and intense pain all over his body. It was the first time he felt so badly injured, after all, he hadn't been attacked with bare hands. Die, cursed dinosaur. The moment Dash heard that, he slightly moved his head to the left and saw Devin playing beside him, insulting a dinosaur. Seeing that she was okay was all that mattered to Dash. He knew he had acted recklessly, but at that moment, he believed she was in danger, so all he did was run to the place he had been called to. Looking at all the bandages on his body, Dash sighed, wondering how bad he was to barely be able to move. This time, he definitely doubted he could participate in the tournament that would take place in a month. You're terrible at that game, and you still play it. Don't you remember that you always needed me to win a match? Dash spoke in a low tone as he saw Devin being eliminated by a dinosaur with a skirt. When Devin heard Dash's voice, she turned around, and upon seeing him awake, she quickly searched for a button on the bed, pressed it, and said, It's a shame you're so badly injured, otherwise, I would have given you a beating. How bad am I? Dash asked, understanding what Devin meant at this moment. Let me ask you one thing. Why were you so foolish? You're smarter than those idiots who deceived you. How could you not have noticed? Devin asked, slightly confused. Dash remained silent for a few seconds and said, I thought you were in danger. And because of that, you put yourself in danger. 
you should have called the police. Devon said, tears inevitably streaming from her eyes. Seeing Devon in this state, Dash, who had been beaten, felt a little bad and said, but I'm not that bad. Can't you see I'm perfectly fine? You have some injuries to your ribs, you were occasionally cut with a sharp weapon, so you lost a considerable amount of blood in your transfer from the place to here. Do you know you could have died? Devon hated it most when people got hurt because of her. She didn't want to be protected by Dash, she had always made it clear that she hated that. All this time, Devon had degraded being strong enough not to depend on Dash, and, instead, be a capable girlfriend for him. But when she realized that Dash had been injured when he was trying to save her from a fake kidnapping, she felt a deep sorrow, knowing how foolish her boyfriend could be. Don't cry, the doctors are coming, so behave, Dash said, joking a bit, but the pain in his body didn't allow much. When the doctors arrived, they raised the bed so that Dash was in a more upright position, and began to examine him in general. In this process, he answered simple and more complex questions, all to find out if he had any complications due to the blow to his head. You were lucky to have received first aid in such an effective way. As your doctor, I recommend you rest and place ice packs on your injured ribs. Are any of them broken? Fortunately, none are broken, you recover faster than expected, said the doctor as he performed some more checks and left the room. Devon, who was by his side, didn't stop holding his hand, to which Dash said, I didn't think I'd have such a clingy girlfriend, I'm considering getting injured in tournaments, so you'll be more affectionate with your awesome boyfriend. If you keep making jokes about it, I'll end up breaking your ribs with a kick. Devon was relieved that Dash was okay, so after a few jokes, they began to talk about what had really happened. Dash smiled in pain. There were things he wanted to improve, but he felt satisfied with everything he had achieved. Have you heard any news about Dash or Devon? They haven't come to class, so all this is getting stranger and stranger. Miguel was very confused by the absence of his friends. Hawk was also puzzled and said, they might have gone partying, it often happens that beer bottles are passed around without counting, and you end up waking up in a house you don't know. They're not coming, Victor said, approaching the table where they were talking. Miguel looked at Victor and asked, do you know something you can share with us? The night before, someone sent Dash to be beaten. The most cowardly thing is that they did it unexpectedly, making it difficult for him to win the fight, Victor said, still very angry about how Dash had been attacked. Huck furrowed his brows, he couldn't believe that the Dash they knew had been beaten and asked, how many were there? There weren't teenagers, that's the problem. He was attacked by real gang members. Shall we visit him? Miguel suggested it upon learning that Dash was injured. Victor shook his head upon hearing that question and said, it's not a good idea at all. I doubt he'd want us to see him in the state he's in. After discussing the same topic, everyone went straight home, and in the afternoon, precisely everyone gathered in their respective dojos. Being a Cobra Kai, Hawk was telling the rest of what had happened to Dash and said, that's why you must be careful, don't go to any place if you receive a similar message. Did something happen? At that moment, Cress came out of the office and looked at the worried faces of his students, so he asked with some interest. Hawk, who was the most loyal to this man, immediately said, We heard that Ash was beaten by gang members. His condition is not pleasant, but they say he's not in danger. Hmm, a shame. Then we must consider that he'll be out of any competition or training for a few months. Cress hid his smile well, knowing that he had gotten rid of an important piece that obstructed his path to the top. But at that moment, just as the class was about to start, several cars stopped outside the dojo, and men in black suits got out. Is there something you need? Cress asked, taking a few steps forward. Wayne, who was leading the group, said, Mr. John Cress, you are under arrest for organizing a murder attempt, extortion, and robbery against a minor. You have the right to remain silent, anything you say now can and will be used against you in a court of law. The confident smile on Cress's face disappeared completely upon hearing those words, so he quickly said, there must be a condition, I have nothing to do with what they are mentioning. We recommend that you remain silent, we have enough evidence to determine that you are guilty of these crimes, whispered Maggie, putting handcuffs on Cress, who resisted. You can't do this to me. Cress shouted as he was taken out of the dojo. At that moment, Johnny appeared, and upon seeing Cress being arrested, he approached. What the hell is going on? Wayne looked at Johnny and said, you must be the other sensei of this place, you should consider having better people around. What happened? This man conspired with a group of gang members to murder a young man, we haven't figured out what his intentions were, but seeing his dojo, we believe it was to eliminate competition, Wayne said, smiling a bit and heading towards the car. Miguel, who had come out, whispered, I knew he was a bad man, I can't believe he was responsible for what happened to Dash. Tell me everything. Johnny said, holding Miguel's shoulders. 
In the middle of his room, Dash could feel the rays of light falling on his tired body, as he tried to open his eyes. As he looked at the sun rising, he got up from the floor with difficulty and looked at his body in the large mirror. That really got me hard. The sudden feeling of pain didn't surprise Dash, who was still recovering. It was as if he had been hit by a group of cyclists, and the pain still persisted. I thought it was a bad dream, but the pain is real. Suddenly, Dash seemed to realize something and walked to the bathroom to wash his face, which had red bruises. His body had traces of sutured cuts, torn skin, and large scrapes extending across his chest. Despite having trained his body to withstand blows, he was quite badly injured. As he walked to the door of his room, he didn't forget to take a photo and send it to Devin, saying, a massage wouldn't hurt right now Devin. What are you doing standing up? Dash, who read the message, smiled a bit and said, I have to walk, or I'll be constipated, and a carnivore like me can't eat fast digesting foods. You played very dirty by sending those people after a literal kid. Didn't you ever think there were cameras on every corner you passed? Technology has advanced a lot, didn't you ever think about that? Wayne looked at Cress, who was sitting without saying a word. Maggie, who was in the observation room, said, he's been like that all day, he hasn't said a single word, as if we could somehow ignore the crimes he committed, just because he's an old man. Charges will be brought against your involvement in the attack on Dash Hill. We don't want you to spend the rest of your life in prison, but enough for you to pay for your crimes. Mr. Anderson, the main lawyer for the Hale family, made it clear that since Dash had not suffered serious injuries beyond the superficial ones, they wouldn't leave an elderly man ruined. This was very strange on the part of the Hale family, Anderson even thought that by making this choice, there were intentions behind it, such as thinking about killing him outside of prison. The things the Hale family could do with all the money they had were incredible, giving them the power to take any action a person could think of. According to our observations, Mr. Cress believes he is part of a meaningless war with dojos throughout the valley. Reviewing his record, we deduce that it might be due to war trauma, but we cannot ignore the crimes he committed. Anderson furrowed his brows and murmured, I doubt the Hale family cares about this. All they care about is that this man never gets near their son again. If he's in an asylum or in jail, it's the judge's decision on the sentence. Hale Mansion, one day after the attack. While Dash was recovering from the injuries lying on a waterbed, he was taking advantage of this free time to talk to Cheng and Dri, because he hadn't spent much time with them lately. When are you coming to China? Dri asked as he showed the changes in the Sakura Bushido Dojo that had occurred in China. Dash scratched his chin and said, at the end of this year, we plan to travel with Devon. I'll have permission to travel whenever I want without the authority of an adult, so I'll be able to decide on my own. It's a shame you'll miss the Hidden Champions tournament. Cheng wants to seek the title again, but he'll have a hard time with my participation this year, Dri said as he recorded Cheng's training. Dash smiled slightly, he never imagined that these two would end up being such good friends after the tournament. It wasn't known what happened to their rivalry after the tournament, but now that he had experienced it firsthand, he could say that things went much better. Just as Dash was about to ask how Mr. Han was doing, someone knocked on the door and said, Mr. Hale, you have a visitor. Who is it? Dash asked, a little confused. Normally Devin would come in without being announced in this way, so he felt curious. Johnny, he wants to talk to you, so I told him I'd see if you were awake, the man on the other side of the door said. Dash understood what he meant and agreed to have him brought to his room. You could let him in, he's a trusted man. Unless something serious happened, Johnny wouldn't cause problems. He might be here to find out what really happened, and why Cress was about to go to jail. A few minutes later, after saying goodbye to Dree, who said he would call after finishing his training, Johnny entered Dash's room, followed by a bodyguard who stayed outside in case something happened. Johnny looked at the bruises on Dash's face and arms. This first look was shocking because he never thought it would be so bad. So, with a bit of nervousness because he didn't expect how Dash would react, he asked, does it look worse than it is, or the other way around? It looks worse than it is, Dash said as he leaned his body a bit more. Johnny sat in a chair and asked, how did all this happen? It's really my fault, I thought Cress had changed and let him into Cobra Kai. It doesn't matter Mr. Lawrence. At least you realize that certain people don't change, no matter how much time passes, Dash said, cutting off the man's guilt speech. The last thing he wanted was for him to feel guilty about what happened. Johnny wasn't to blame for what happened to him because of Cress. Everyone was old enough to take responsibility for their own actions, and mature enough to understand whose fault it was. Your dojo will be very hurt with the loss of Sensei Cress. They will need it in good condition for both the tournament that is coming up and the next one from the valley, Dash said as he took out a soda from a small fridge next to him. Johnny nodded and said, still, I have to apologize. I feel like it's partly my fault. 
If you put aside the problems, maybe he'll recover. Do you want to play a game? Ash took out a deck of cards and smiled slightly, not giving importance to Lawrence's worries. An hour later, Lawrence left much calmer than he had come. After his friend's death, things had gotten worse, but he was reassured that the problems weren't directed at Cobra Kai. Devin, who had returned from school, looked at Ash having fun in a video game talking to a Russian and asked, Are you talking with a strange accent, while pretending to be an old man? The discussion is getting fun, I told him my hobby is to score against my wife, but that now I live alone, Dash said, mimicking his voice. Two weeks had passed since Dash had been attacked. The recovery had been good, but it was certain, at least for him, that he wouldn't participate in the tournament. Well, now everyone is wondering, will you fight or not? Victor looked at Dash, who was observing the training inside Sakura Bushido. I must focus on recovering to think about the next El Valle tournament, and be ready for the National Karate Tournament. Everything has a line for it to be progressive, said Dash, feeling slightly better than before. He had healed from the rib injuries, now, he could do light exercises, but not push himself too hard to avoid complications in the recovery. He knew his condition better than anyone, so he wouldn't return seriously to training until he felt he was in perfect condition. The only thing he would focus on was maintaining his body's condition a bit. Do you want to send him into a fight when he barely survived one? Devin approached with a couple of cold water bottles and glared at Victor. Dash, who received the water bottle, muttered, It wasn't that exaggerated, I won the fight. But he won the fight, that's why he's the dragon warrior. The whole school trusts you, they believe you are the strongest, followed by Dash, so you must maintain that confidence very firmly, Devin said as she sat down. Dash nodded at this, it was well known that, at least in terms of experience levels, Victor was the oldest member. You all know I joined the dojo because my mother wanted Mr. Kim as a husband, after that, everything flowed, and here I am. How can you say that without being ashamed? Devin couldn't understand the level of Victor's audacity. What do you want me to say? In the end, we'll all die, and something like shame is absurd if you think about it, Victor said as he walked away. When Victor went to train because the responsibility of defeating Jack now rested on his shoulders, he had to make the most of it. Now that they were alone, Devin looked at Dash and asked, Are you going to participate in the tournament? I'm not sure. Dash's response was very ambiguous because he neither denied nor accepted anything. It was true that he wanted to fight against Jack, but in his current state, he would only make a fool of himself. Sometimes it's better to know when to step back from fights you know you will lose. Devin studied Dash's expression. She knew perfectly well when he lied or told the truth, so she concluded that he was still considering it. What do you want me to do? Dash asked, leaning back on Devin's legs. A silence fell between them, and when Devin didn't respond for a long time, Dash smiled very expressively and said, Don't worry, even though I want to lose at times, I won't give away my victory. Anyone who wants to beat me must do it on equal terms. In the end, you always decide to change the things you want to do. You've been like that since the time you fainted at school, Devin said, stroking Dash's forehead and pushing away his hair. Dash's clear eyes looked into Devin's, and he asked, Do you still remember it? My father always says that the most impressive moments are never forgotten. That makes sense. I still remember our first kiss. Devin smiled slightly, and just as she was about to say something, an unpleasant voice was heard in the distance. My dear golden trophy, I have the solution for you. Looking towards the dojo's door, Santiago appeared holding a rifle on his shoulder, as if he were in a war against enemies in the surroundings. What is he doing? Devin widened her eyes, seeing that old man, who now worked as a security guard, walking around with exposed weapons. Santiago, we've talked about the weapon. Dash never thought anything wrong about Santiago's behavior. Many believed he was a war veteran who would protect them, and everyone gave him gifts. I'll kill any bastard who wants to come and cause problems. Everyone knows a lot about karate, but we all know that gunpowder causes damage, Santiago said, smiling slightly. Dash ignored this and asked, what was the solution you were talking about? After that initial impression, everyone returned to their training. Santiago was like an expert guerrilla warrior, ready to go to war against anyone who wanted to harm this place. As they left you worse than a caught thief, I considered pulling some strings and brought you a good guy who's willing to train, Santiago said, pointing to the door and shouting, don't be shy, I might have hit you when you were a kid, but I'm not resentful. When Dash looked at the guy at the door, he was a bit surprised and asked, Could you tell me who that guy is? Hmm, you don't know. Devin asked, Do you think we know? Look closely, don't you remember him? Santiago raised his eyebrows and looked at the guy standing at the entrance, as if he, too, couldn't find the similarity he wanted others to see. Dash shook his head slightly and, sitting on the floor, said, If I had remembered, I would tell you. 
But now that you mention it, he does seem vaguely familiar. Don't lie, you don't know who that guy is, Devin stopped Ash, who was lying and was very obvious about it. Antony Silva, the guy his head you smashed in your first competition, Santiago said, pointing to the guy standing at the door who seemed visibly uncomfortable. When Santiago mentioned the name of the guy standing in front of them, Dash nodded slightly and asked, I understand everything, but I want to ask, what exactly is the solution he will give us to our problem? This guy trained in Mexico for some time, returned here after having some problems at school, and I took charge of looking after him, Santiago said, not giving much importance to the past. Devin looked at Dash as if she were waiting for his decision in this situation and said nothing. She didn't trust someone who had caused her a certain degree of discomfort. Remembering what Antoni had done to Dash a long time ago raised her level of distrust. However, there were kids back then, and she could understand that things might have changed. Standing up, Dash walked towards Antoni. When he was at a certain distance from him, he extended his hand and said, Welcome to Sakura Bushido. I hope you bring all the love that this dojo can offer into your life. Thank you. By the way, if it helps, I would like to apologize for what I did in that tournament, Antoni said, feeling a bit uncomfortable mentioning this. Looking at Santiago, Dash smiled slightly and said, Well, I remember that I paid you back for what you did to me that day. But I don't live in the past, so let's focus on the present. I hope everything has gone better for you now that we've all grown up. When Dash said this, he left the dojo. After all, he couldn't train rigorously, so he only came to support some students and pick up Devin, who was training in the same way as before. In the car, Devin drove back home and asked, Do you really trust that guy? Do you mean Antoni? Santiago told me that he ordered me to be beaten in that tournament. He considered my elimination necessary back then, so that his dojo could continue getting good students, Dash replied in a calm tone. In the Japan tournament, Santiago told him everything that had happened in that tournament, so in a way, he understood it. Everyone in life seeks to eliminate competition in some way, so he didn't give it much importance. However, he would test Antoni, and depending on his performance within the dojo, a judgment would be made to decide if he stays in Sakura Bushido or not. You trust people a lot. I wouldn't do that if I were you in other places, Devin said, visibly worried. The next day, Dash returned to classes after a long time. Those who looked at Dash thought he was a bully looking for fights on the street, but those who recognized him felt visibly excited to see him back. I told you to use makeup to cover those visible bruises, Devin said, looking at all those glances they were receiving. Dash shook his head and said, no need. Does a lion hide its wounds from others? No, a lion shows its scars with pride, knowing it has won every battle. Yes, a lion, Devin said while ignoring this sarcastic behavior. When they entered the school, Hawk, who had changed noticeably, approached Dimitri. Seeing Dash back, he said, the dragon warrior is back. We thought you were dead, but everyone was hiding this. I mean, I'm glad you're here, Dimitri said, looking at Dash, who was staring at them without saying a word. I didn't die, and I haven't participated in that Dragon Warrior tournament for a long time. Have you thought about the beating you'll get without me in the tournament? Dash asked, visibly smiling. Hawk was stunned and said, we won't be defeated. If we see that Jack easily sweeps us, then we'll figure out a way to win. Yeah, I even considered substituting for you, Dimitri said with a slight smile. Devin shook her head and said, let's go to class, that's what matters now. Talking only about karate ends up numbing our brains. Come on, let's talk about the new movie about a cannibal worm, Dash suggested. Where were you hit? Miguel looked at Dash's bruises and was surprised to see that he was still visibly injured. Dash looked at the bruises and said, they don't hurt, it was worse before. How are things at your dojo now that you only have one sensei? Devin suddenly asked, expressing her curiosity. Tori, who was eating, looked up and said, things are better than before. Many have set aside that unjustified hatred for Miyagi-Do and all those absurd things. Taking full control of the dojo, Johnny worked hard on the discipline of his students, and how they behave towards other people. When he found out how the exchange meetings between Cobra Kai and Sakura Bushido students had gone, he knew how beneficial those classes had been for many to understand another important aspect of life. What they were now looking for was a healthy rivalry between both dojos. Johnny didn't want his rivalry with Daniel to be used by his students, and it was something he couldn't reverse until recently. Kreisa planted many bad doubts in the kids, changing them little by little, but when they found out what he had done to Dash, many got scared. For Dash, this was much better considering all the problems that were arising between students, and now it seemed that everything had calmed down a bit more. The cafeteria food has improved, it seems our comments have actually made a difference. Dash murmured as he looked at a more balanced meal now. Devin smiled slightly and said, I think that's due to what was mentioned to the principal a few weeks ago. 
I can't imagine how excited she is about that inter-school tournament. The conversation took different turns. Dash, who was a bit disinterested, had it to a quieter place. During all this time, he had experienced situations he had never imagined. Now he had a girlfriend and many friends. Now what? Dash asked as he sat down to think a bit. I heard you were injured. How are you now? Robbie appeared by his side a few minutes after Dash wanted to think to himself in silence. Dash, who was leaning on a bench outside the school building, looked at him and said, I'm fine. How about you? You know it's complicated to have a conversation with you. Robbie sat down next to him, visibly uneasy. I could have died, but I'm fine. Fortunately, I didn't break any bones or get stabbed, Dash said in a calmer tone. Looking out at the soccer field where a game was taking place, Robbie smiled slightly and said, another wouldn't have been as lucky. How's your relationship with your father going? Everyone mentions that he has changed a lot. Has he reached out to you at any point? Dash looked at Robbie to gauge his thoughts from his mere expression. I haven't tried. Taking the first step is complicated, and I don't know if you understand. Do you feel anger seeing his relationship with Miguel and the other Cobra Kai students? Dash asked, understanding Robbie's situation a bit. Seeing that there was a long silence, Dash sighed and said, I was about to leave home after a fight with my father. I even came to hate my brothers because they did receive a love life at a young age when I was raised in a different way. Apart from Devin, Dash should not confess these words to anyone else until now, and that surprised Robbie a lot. He thought Dash's life was perfect, but was surprised to know that it wasn't as he believed. Have you overcome it? Robbie found a very close familiarity in those words. I could do it. I made peace with my father, so now we have much calmer communication, Dash said, feeling a bit more open in this conversation. I always wanted to have a brother. Dash looked at Robbie and advised him, all I can tell you is that you'll feel better forgiving your father. Many say we'll regret it when they're no longer with us, but what I believe is that you'll feel better. Obviously, the relationship with absent parents is complicated. Many won't agree to let go of the differences, but that would be the best way to move on with life in a more open way. When Dash did it, he felt better. He knew he couldn't find in his dad what he expected from him, but that was okay. When he understood that he couldn't demand what he wanted to happen, he knew that was life. He now had no problems with his family. They knew there was a limitation in their communication, but that was okay because that was how they had chosen to treat each other. You always surprise me. Robbie smiled slightly because he didn't know what to say. I'm a box of surprises, Dash said as he stood up to walk a bit and asked, how are things with Sam? I don't recommend falling in love with her. Devin has a cousin I can introduce you to. Robbie quickly said, it's not necessary. I'm not looking for a girlfriend right now. Yeah, that's what Hulk said before having a girlfriend. Alright, to defeat Jack, you must be very focused on each of his movements. In the last competition, this guy, who many consider as strong as I am, was defeated by getting distracted, so it will be straightforward for you to win. In an open field near Dash's home, there was a special place where the Sakura Bushido boys usually trained. Dash's parents had taken care of building a suitable training site. You won't defeat Jack, you just need to score clear points, so you'll have to work on your speed. Everyone feared what Jack could become because Hawk had been defeated even while fighting alongside Dimitri and Mitch, who lost to a woman. This is embarrassing, I said he was strong, but I never mentioned he was invincible. Hawk had to endure the looks on his face every time Jack was mentioned. Dimitri said on the side, you should have considered that before throwing punches at him. That was really something you should have thought about when that guy stopped you. For a misunderstanding, things have gone too far. Sam on the side felt uncomfortable. She knew this training would help everyone avoid meaningless fights, but she knew she wouldn't be better friends with Tori now, knowing she was interested in Miguel, who seemed not to care. So, is he just strong? Robbie trusted his strength, which also had a point of value, because Dash had valued that strength, and knew it was very strong. Devin, on the other hand, was fast. Her kicks were much superior to Kim's, and this would give her a significant advantage when facing Kim, who was eagerly awaiting that showdown. If Devin teams up with Antoni, they could have a chance because they are team matchups. This means that two fights would be evaluated, counting the combat time, the punches given, and assessing both fights. It doesn't matter if you lose a fight, just winning one matchup in record time is more than enough to win the overall match and move on to the next round. Dash clarified his point with the whiteboard. So, why are we here? To train, of course. There are three types of karate among us, so we can gain experience by facing each other, Dash said, forming a matchup table. You won't only train your body but also your mind. Many of you don't analyze the fights and just fight with your hearts, but you must read the movements of each fighter to know how to attack them. 
To explain his move, Dash called Devin to the front and said, Everyone understands what I mean, but no one understands how to use it. Imagine I'm facing Devin, and her specialty is long-range attacks. My only way is to shorten that distance, but when should I shorten that distance? Hawk, who participated the most, said, mid-fight. The best way to shorten the distance would be when we feel that she is about to attack. Otherwise, we would be hit relatively easily and lose, said Robbie, sharing his thoughts. Miguel, who was also thinking about this question, said, But what do we do if she faints, and when we close the distance, we make a mistake? That's precisely what you must consider when fighting. What would be my best chances when facing an enemy? The way you should act is as your karate has the best chances, Dash said, explaining his point completely. By training this, not only would everyone present improve, but they would also become smarter in their fights. When the theory was explained, practice quickly followed, and Dash let each one face each other as they saw fit. Bang. 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 Decrease the force of your blows, light near attacks, and flow better with your movements, Dash said seriously as he watched Hawks fight against Victor. Don't confuse practice with the real attack, consider that. Now. Hawk moved his right fist towards an exposed area of Victor, but at that moment, he saw his opponent stepping back, and when he lost the attack, a kick gently hit his knee. How did you do that? Hawk asked, knowing that if Victor had used more force, he would have been injured. Dash reminded him, you have to improve the control of your emotions in the fight, you're still too aggressive and end up controlling yourself when attacking. By giving them these tips, Dash hoped they would improve as individuals and understand a bit more about how the mind of a true fighter works. We just have to see what will happen in the tournament. I can assure you, I'm in perfect condition, I can jump without feeling any pain in my ribs. Dash shouted as he took small jumps behind Devin, who was buying ice cream. The day of the inter-school tournament had arrived, and the atmosphere was lively. Obviously, competition between the two schools generated hostility, but Dash had not gotten involved at this point. When you mentioned you wanted to talk about something, you never mentioned this. Didn't you say it was better to focus on competitions that really matter? Devin looked at Dash and handed him his coffee-flavored ice cream. Dash ignored Devin's displeasure and pointed out, I just thought it would be amazing to fight together. Don't you think so? Do you trust me so little? Devin turned around. That's a misunderstanding, it's not my intention to say I don't trust you. But if advancing or not depends on someone else, it's better to go together, Dash hastily said, noticing Devin's calm look, which seemed uninterested but was quite the opposite. Haha. <laughs> Devin laughed with a little joy in his eyes. He chuckled lightly, sending slight shivers down Dash's spine. He didn't bring up the topic again. I'm being honest. In that case, let's fight together in the next national dojo competition. I heard they'll implement the same rules as in this competition, so we could learn important things. You're absolutely right. Dash finally gave up trying to participate. In the end, he knew this competition would offer little besides facing Jack, so he was well aware they could cross paths in other places. After that, both boarded the waiting bus, and surprisingly, Chosen, Daniel, and Johnny decided to accompany them in this competition, knowing their students were about to participate together. Dash, at the back of the bus, realized that this trio was terrifying. Few knew how legendary these students were individually, but he was well aware of how incredible they were when gathered in one place. Now that hostilities seemed to have diminished, things among the students had cooled down even more, and each one showed their differences in training. That was for the best, outside the dojo, it was better not to talk about karate or take it into account, as it would bring more problems than benefits. Hawk, did you go back to your purple hair color? A boy looked at Hawk's hair color and asked with some curiosity. Upon hearing this question, Hawk showed no displeasure or anger and simply replied, They told me this color looks better on me. Red would make you look more intimidating. I think the same. There was a cheerleading team that had accompanied them to the event, and all students could attend the competition, as long as they were interested. As it was a significant competition, everyone was excited and expectant, waiting to see what would happen. When they arrived at the school grounds, Johnny stood in front of everyone and said, You know, guys, break bones and greet afterward. The enemy must be crushed mercilessly in special competitions. That's not so important, remember to have fun and, most importantly, learn what the rival can show you. Daniel intervened in the conversation to clarify this point to his students. Johnny looked at Daniel and whispered, What kind of crap is that? We can't tell them to break their rival's bones. These kids hit Hawk and your student Dimitri. Do you want to show leniency? Johnny looked at Daniel with astonishment, and regretted that this guy had been invited. Chosen, who was slightly in favor of Johnny, said, Broken bones don't matter, they usually heal with time, but pride is a bigger wound that takes longer to heal. 
For the love of God Daniel gave up, knowing he was contradicting two stubborn men. You heard them, guys, no mercy. Yes. Dash, as he wouldn't be fighting, brought a trumpet in his backpack and blew it loudly. Come on, guys, whoever loses has to run a naked marathon. Yes. Everyone cheered happily, but after realizing what they had supported, they quickly refused to participate in that activity, but it was too late. Johnny, who heard that, shouted, that applies only to the guys, don't get excited, you demon's offspring. Does that apply to binary genders? Daniel looked at the boy holding a camera and asked, what did you say? It's better if I don't say anything, or I'll leave him halfway. Johnny gave up on that conversation. Wasabi warriors. How does that sound like Korean food? Johnny looked at the Wasabi Warriors flags and immediately criticized the name. Daniel, beside him, almost had a vein explode on his forehead and said, Wasabi is a plant used as a condiment in Japanese cuisine. Where did you read it's from Korea? I don't read, Johnny said as he walked towards his students to give them orders. Chosen got off the bus, stretched, and muttered, My back isn't what it used to be, I'll need a therapist. Daniel was left speechless. He couldn't believe the kind of team that had been formed to represent the school, and he wasn't exactly sure why he was in this place. In the distance, Dash had descended with a huge flag on his back and shouted, Anyone not cheering for the team because they're looking for a girlfriend in this school, will be beaten in a group until they cry blood. Yes. The Sakura Bushido boys began to arrive in groups, and their task was to deliver t-shirts, sweets, and job opportunities as part of the family. How smart I am, what matters now are the businesses Dash has shared his goal of buying a good house before leaving school. Dimitri, who was alone as moral support, said, how clever these guys are. Do they manage the businesses around here? We should demand half of the profits, they're making money at our expense. Who do you think finances the tournament? Devin asked, ignoring Dimitri's useless complaints. That makes sense. Let's go, Cobra Kai. Johnny shouted as he advanced with his students, lined up as if they were in the middle of a military base. Dash was amazed at their resistance to shame and said, I couldn't do that. We have to gather everyone, we need to boost morale, Devin said, seeing how lively the surroundings were. But Dash simply walked towards a hot dog stand and ordered two. After all, they had to eat, and what better place to do it than here. If that hurts you later, I hope it's not in the middle of the competition. Are you sure you don't want any? Dash asked, slightly surprised that Devin wasn't interested in eating when it was one of his well-hidden hobbies. When they entered the school facilities, Dash didn't have to participate in many routines, since the other senseis would take care of that. Listen well. Chosen said, ignoring the fact that Sakura Bushido's best student was next to him, enjoying some huge hot dogs. This competition should be taken as preparation for the national dojo competition in pairs. You shouldn't think about anything other than your own strategies, and remember that now all of you together belong to a single team. Johnny, on the side, shouted loudly, remember to break all their bones. Train your defense, it's not important to win, but to learn. Daniel, who was like water against fire, said these words to his now larger group of students. Chosen frowned and said, despite the differences, you must find a balance and know that you are the only ones aware of your surroundings. Does that mean you're calling the others stupid? Dimitri appeared behind Chosen and said these words while holding some huge churros. Chosen, who turned around, said, Both senseis don't agree, so we'll ignore the fact that they have different mentalities. If you can't understand your differences and complement each other, it means we're not a strong team. Despite having understood and limited the problems, I'm sure they'll have a long way to go for everyone to understand their differences, Dash said, putting his arm around Devin's shoulders, who was more serious than usual. Dash had learned that she wanted to officially defeat Kim, and when Devon sets her mind to something, she fights so hard that it's impossible for anyone to stop her. By the time each sensei gave a short speech to their respective students, the competition administrator said, Students participating, go to the mat. The rest can go to the reserved seats for you. Dash looked at Devon and said, Good luck, I look forward to your victory. I'll take care of winning this competition, Devon said as she said goodbye to Dash with a small kiss. Once the students were ready, Dash entered with the others into a gigantic pavilion, where at least a thousand people were eagerly waiting to see them fight. Darn it, I hope to see some blood. The women's fights will surely be the most boring, we can go look for a girlfriend while they fight. Dash heard comments of all kinds, but ignoring all of them, he sat down and said, No fighting as an audience, endure, and only strike back if they're the first to hit. At noon, the sun's rays pierced through the clouds, illuminating the earth with strength, and there was a lot of bustle at Seaford High School. When Dash finally sat among the audience, he knew he had the best position to watch the matches, and from his perspective, he would learn everything without any problem. 
Although most of the students were from Seaford High School, there were a few students from Dash's school, and there wasn't much difference in the support given to those who would fight. There was a lot of security, from police officers to volunteer adults who were responsible for evaluating students by checking their student credentials. If they didn't belong to either of the two schools, they would be escorted out of the premises. First of all, getting in was something very complicated, and if they were inside, it should be very difficult not to be caught. Although this competition is the first created between the two schools, many who had no idea what would happen were excited. Down among the participants, Kim was nervous because she hadn't had such a large audience watching her in a long time. Jack, who was beside her, caressed her shoulder, trying to ease her nerves. Shortly after, he looked through the crowd and was surprised to see Dash, whom he initially thought would participate. What is he doing among the crowd? Jury asked, looking at Dash sitting as a spectator. I don't know, but everything indicates he won't participate. Jack felt a little disappointed because he wanted to fight Dash, but he knew there was a reason why he wouldn't participate. Kim wasn't disappointed by Dash's absence and said, I don't care, but I know Devin will participate. At least we have to beat her. At that moment, the pavilion was filled with students, many singing, and others shouting nonsense that didn't make sense, but it was normal. Sitting in the middle of the group that came to support the students from Del Valle School, Dash was talking to everyone who hadn't been selected to fight. Suddenly, he saw Jack watching him and waved at him. In past competitions, he was someone who was unwavering about winning a tournament, but this time, it wasn't necessary, and he knew perfectly well that his teammates had the chance to win. This was the first time he didn't participate and stayed among the audience, and feeling what it's like to observe people, he thought it was somewhat unbearable. He couldn't do anything but watch Devin fight, and that feeling was exactly what caused him a bit of nervousness. Now I understand what it feels like to be a spectator. Dash muttered, understanding Devin's words. On the left side was Dimitri, who didn't stop talking about things that Dash really didn't need to know or hear. I'm serious, Jack is the kind of fighter that no one expects anything from and ends up winning. Can't your students stop mentioning unnecessary things? Johnny asked, clearly listening to Dimitri's bitter words. Daniel raised both hands and said, he can't help it. I've mentioned it to him many times, but that's how he is. But Dimitri, who didn't care about the looks around him, without wasting time, just as he was about to respond, Dash beside him said, I defeated him in a tournament in Japan. You defeated him in Japan? How strong is he? Dash looked at Jack in the distance and said, there's no one except Robbie who can withstand his strength a bit. Many might even consider it supernatural. Seeing Dash's smile, Dimitri was very surprised at not being able to find any falsehood in the words of this guy, who was a three-time champion in many important tournaments outside the country. Can everyone hear me? At that moment, a voice came from the speakers, and a man entered the middle of the pavilion arena with a big smile. Yes. How do you like the place? The presenter smiled slightly and said, Welcome to the first tournament between Del Valle School and Seaford High School. After several unfortunate events, something incredible has emerged. Pausing, the presenter shouted, This tournament is special because the rankings will be by team, which means that two matches will be taken into account to advance to the next round. Hearing the rules, Dash knew that not all pairs of both schools were teams, and they would face matches on equal terms against other pairs. Everything would end when the teams of any school were completely defeated. The team tournament has begun. Devin Lee and Tony Silva against Jerry Martinez, Claire Arias, announced the referee, revealing the first matches. Under the watchful eyes of the audience, Devin stepped into the arena alongside Antoni, who had replaced Dash due to injuries. While everyone didn't know who Antoni was, being a replacement for someone like Dash definitely meant he had to be strong. We'll start with the women's match, Devin Lee against Claire Arias. Devin nodded and stood in the arena, while Antoni exited, waiting for his turn to fight. Old rules. We'll follow the rules of any karate tournament. If you want to surrender, it's enough to announce it to a referee, said the man in charge of announcing the matches. The referee looked at the competitors and nodded, extending his hand straight up, saying, Look at me, Bo. Look at each other, Bo. Devin and Claire exchanged greetings. It was then that the referee started the match. Fight. Just as Devin heard the start of the match, wearing her new black uniform with the emblems of the three dojos representing her school, she looked up and down at her opponent. She shouldn't pose a problem, murmured Devin as she raised her guard in a style similar to the kung fu taught by Mr. Han, and took a deep breath. Devin, you can do it, finisher. Behind Devin, Dash, as a spectator, was losing his voice with the powerful shouts he made from the audience. Now, Claire, who couldn't stay still, began the fight by delivering a straight kick to Devin's stomach. Just as Claire's shout ended, Devin's eyes narrowed slightly. In a single step, she charged fiercely against Claire, 
squeezing the five fingers of each of her hands tightly. Boom. Dealing with Claire's attack, Devon didn't retreat, using her most powerful martial art, the Northern Dragon. Furthermore, to the amazement of the crowd, she extended her hand forward to grab Claire's right fist, and with her right hand, a powerful blow collided with her opponent's chest, pushing her backward. Point. Shouted the referee as Claire showed signs of pain. When everyone saw Devon's amazing martial arts, they couldn't help but cheer in excitement, but all those cheers were drowned out by the trumpet that Dash was blowing from the audience. That was amazing. Is she the four-time champion of the Del Valle tournament? Looks of astonishment were directed to the center of the arena, even Kim fell silent, seeing Devon's refined martial arts, and murmured, Claire is not a simple girl, she belongs to the Black Dragon Dojo. Yes, Dash used that same attack against me the last time we fought. Jack nodded upon hearing those words. Devon, on the other hand, retreated slowly, impassively looking at Claire and patiently waiting for the match to resume. Looking at both who had returned to the center of the arena, the referee nodded and signaled, ready. Fight. Ah. Claire let out an intimidating scream to capture Devon's attention, but that was impossible because she was very familiar with fights. Boom. 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 Using her hands, Devon deflected all of Claire's attacks, and, among the punches, attacked a few times, which didn't add up to a point. Huff but despite the not-so-strong punches, Claire felt a sharp pain in her stomach and stepped back a few times. She had received numerous blows in her training, but Devon's blows were sharp. Seeing that she couldn't advance through Devon's defense, Claire attacked fiercely to test her chances a bit more. When Devon saw a kick heading towards her side, she raised her left leg, blocking the kick, then paused, lifting her right leg with a spin, and attacked forcefully. Boom. Impacting Claire's defense, Devon took advantage of this and ran fiercely forward. Closing the distance, she elbowed Claire's stomach, and before the referee announced a point, she delivered a spinning kick to the same area. Crack. Ah, point. The referee approached Claire, and seeing her moving from side to side in pain, he shook his head and shouted, Winner Devon Lee. In just a minute, the entire crowd fell silent as they saw how Devon took care of Claire, who seemed to have a good level in martial arts. Daniel observed Devon's brutal karate and felt, for some reason, that it was much more ruthless than Cobra Kai's. He couldn't understand how they, being good people, ended up in such cruel competitions. That girl is really tough, there's no mercy in competitions, Johnny excitedly commented, watching Devon finish the match. I guess there's more to this competition than just a simple victory. Chosen drew his own conclusions as he observed the conclusion of the fight. As it was a three-point match, Devon had won with only two points, which was truly incredible. Devon, who looked at Claire, bowed slightly, then slowly walked away. Observing the crowd roaring, regardless of the fact that someone from another school had won, demonstrated how incredible martial arts could be. It was a good warm-up, Devon murmured, not looking back at Claire as she walked away. However, before that, she still had to see if Kim had watched her match. Turning her head, Devon shot a glance toward Kim's position, only to find that Kim had also been watching. Devon. That was brilliant. Tori congratulated her enthusiastically, aware that Devon had won. It was a good fight, well done. Chosen nodded towards Devon, who smiled slightly. Furthermore, Devon's stellar performance today made a significant impact, enhancing the competition on various levels. Devon smiled a bit excitedly, she wasn't cruel to people, but simply fought that way in competitions, and only a few people knew that. After the duel, the competition continued. Now it was Antoni's turn, who ended up winning the match 3 points to 1. Everyone could see that Antoni's karate wasn't bad, but he still wasn't fully letting loose in the fights, so they couldn't say much about Dash's replacement in this competition. The next match was Hawk and Aisha's turn, who lost by one point because Hawk had won the fight, but Aisha had lost, causing them to fall a point short of winning. Having lost in this way, Hawk was quite upset but didn't say anything. He knew that they could have won with one more point from Aisha, but if he hadn't lost a point against him, they would have won. When he realized that his own victory wasn't due to others' defeats, he knew perfectly well that it was his fault. What are the chances of Miguel winning against Jack? Hawk looked at Devin and asked. I hate to say it, but he's up against Tori. Even though she knows about martial arts, she's not as experienced as Kim, and that plays heavily against her, Devin said, watching as the next match began. Experience in martial arts is crucial as it allows the development of technical skills, tactical understanding, and a deeper connection with the discipline. Through continuous practice, practitioners gain perspective, improve their technique, and develop the patience and discipline necessary to advance in their development. Devon knew that Tori was very good, but she was facing a level she may not have had the opportunity to face very often. But I'm sure she can at least not lose so easily. Point. 
watching as Kim scored against Tori, winning the first point, Devin furrowed her brows slightly. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.